Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto had power of the Super Saiyan? The Saiyan legacy on Earth. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Gohan could only feel pain as the wind rushed against his face. His shoulder was now gone, destroyed by his strongest enemy to date, Cell. He couldn't help but scowl inwardly at himself. He could, should, have killed Cell as quickly as possible. He would have saved his father. His mother would have a husband and his brother, soon to be brothers, would have a father. Because of his stupid ego and stupidity, that was all gone. Gohan could feel the pain all right, but it wasn't from his destroyed shoulder, but from all the things that had just happened. Compared to that, his lack of a shoulder was barely a sting. Naruto could honestly say that he enjoyed this new life. A good family, his mate, even if they were both in four-year-old forms, and a lot of excitement from what he had seen. He had to say, while he did enjoy the latter parts of his previous life, he also liked this one. He still couldn't believe his luck in his reincarnation into this world, along with Satsuki. Right now though, he was slightly, but genuinely angry. His brother for four years had just dealt with a threat that had nearly killed Satsuki a few days ago. He had been useless. He couldn't control his powers here like he could Chakra. His body was weaker, his energy was low. Never again. I will not be useless. I will protect her, he thought to himself in anger. The black-haired kid knew that Satsuki could protect herself, but he couldn't help but feel very protective of his mate. She was the same way, very protective of him. Now. He needed a plan. His body had to grow. He had seen it before. Even as a baby, due to his previous life, he was aware of everything. He could remember Gohan being so much weaker when he was seven, even after three years of training, he was still very weak compared to his father in this timeline. Yet, when he had gone into the time chamber, he was hundreds of times stronger. Naruto could easily tell that it was because of his drive and his body with his mind. Chakra was similar being part physical, and being part spiritual, mental. If his body was out of proportion with his mind, he would not become as strong as he wanted. The opposite had been true during the previous timeline, his yang part overpowering his yin by margins. Naruto was thankful that he had been a Saiyan. That would help him become stronger much faster. Now, if he could use the Dragon Balls to become older, he would be all right. First, he needed a way to do it without suspicion. I could find them then say I wanted to become like Gohan and become eleven. Satsuki could come with me as well, a good plan if he had to say. Even if he was weak and could barely control his ki, the energy of this universe, he had been taught by both his father and Gohan to fly. He was pretty fast, faster than the cars he had seen before on TV going around the track in a stadium. He had no doubt that Satsuki could steal the radar and they could find them before anyone found out. Naruto's plan would never work out since Dend and Piccolo would see, but he didn't know about them being able to read his mind. Fortunately, they hadn't used it on him, ever. Satsuki scowled towards Dend when he said that he couldn't heal the scar on Gohan. She liked the older brother of her lover. The boy had been very helpful to her, even though her own father had trained her. She liked this family a lot. They couldn't replace her old one, but they were certainly there for her. Vegeta was like her father prideful, very confident, borderline arrogance, but this one was stronger and more family-loving. Dend, I'll do it, Piccolo gruffly said as he stepped forward. His usual cape had been destroyed during the fight with Cell. His body was beaten with purple blood coming out of cuts, but it seemed that his devotion to his student was stronger. He kneeled down next to Gohan's right arm and placed his hand on it. Chi-Chi had originally hated Piccolo. He had tried to kill her husband, rule the planet, kidnapped her son, and turned him into a fighter, but after Namek, when he had comforted Gohan into a happy boy again, along with helping her second child Naruto, she began to like him. She could finally see why Gohan respected his master so much, he was like an uncle to Gohan, being there for Gohan when Goku was not, just like now. He was so injured yet his hands glowed with energy as he placed it on his student's scar. He yelled as his energy left himself, Gohan started to struggle on the ground, but he eventually stopped. 
He stopped glowing as Piccolo took his green hands of her son, his scar completely gone. A few minutes later, Gohan awoke. He was greeted by the sight of his mother hovering over him, looking concerned. The Demi Saiyan groaned as he held his head, he had a major headache now from his fight, with, Cell. Gohan let out another groan as he clutched his head, all the memories were coming rushing through his head, his father giving up and calling him. Cell trying to get him angry. 16's destruction. Him getting enraged. Turning into a new form before he lost consciousness. He could remember losing control to his Saiyan side. Torturing. Cell. Him trying to blow up. Dad dying. Eventually killing Cell. Gohan widened his eyes as he felt his body going numb. Dad died. It's my fault. I couldn't control it. He gritted his teeth, forgetting everything around him as he clenched his fists. Never again. I will not lose control. I will become stronger, control that form, he snapped out of it as his mother shook him. Gohan, sweetie, are you okay? She asked. She saw his eyes glazing down at the ground and could guess her son's thoughts. She tried to assure him, telling him that the dragon balls would revive him, but she could see that it didn't help. After Gohan finally came down from Thought Central, he got up and looked around. His brother, friends, and everyone else were looking at him in concern. After telling them that he was okay, although he knew that Piccolo didn't believe him, they summoned Shenron. The starred balls glowed with bright orange light before it shot out into the sky, spiraling and twisting until it eventually stopped and faded into a figure. The mighty dragon's voice boomed across the lookout as he demanded why they had interrupted his rest. Shenron. Can you revive the people killed by the androids? Bulma asked. So be it. The green dragon's eyes turned a bright red before some of them felt many lives come back to life. Speak your second wish so I may return to my slumber. He roared as a few like Yamcha and Krillin celebrated a bit. Before anyone could say anything, Gohan stepped forward, I wish to. Guys, no, a childish voice yelled through everyone's mind. Gohan was stunned to hear his father's voice, causing his voice to stop. What is it, Dad? We're going to wish you back, Gohan said. I can't Gohan. When I teleported Cell, I brought him to King Kai's planet. I accidentally caused his death and released some space pirate named Bojack. The Grand Kai punished me with ten years before I could be revived by the Dragon Balls, he told them. Gohan widened his eyes as he fell to his knees in shock. He gritted his teeth in anger as his eyes flashed teal. He smashed his fist into the lookout, causing spider cracks to form. It's my fault. I let him die. If I killed CE, he was interrupted by his father's voice in his head. Goku sighed as he heard his son's thoughts. He needed to take responsibility before Gohan got worse and got too angry. Gohan, it isn't your fault, he yelled to his son. But dad, he was once again interrupted by the full-blooded Saiyan. No but son. We can blame a lot of people. Jero for creating them. Me for letting him live. The androids for not hiding. Cell for blowing up. We can blame a lot of people Gohan, but you know the truth. It isn't your fault. You might not have killed Cell right away, but you still did. You saved everyone on the planet from him. Besides, I can always come back. You are now the protector son. I was entitled Protector of Earth by Kami, but now, I give it to you. You need to train. You need to become stronger, Goku continued. Dad, I can't, I'm not you. I could protect you when it came to it. I, Gohan tried to protest. Goku sighed. What he said next would be a little harsh, but it would be necessary to keep Gohan going. Gohan, you are the new protector. If you don't train, what might happen? What happens when the next threat comes? You must be prepared. You need to protect your mom, your brother, your friends, everyone. If you don't train, what will happen to them? Remember, Cell? What would have happened if you didn't beat him? He would have destroyed Earth, then went on to the rest of the universe. He would have killed everyone. Do you want that to happen? No. Then stop blaming yourself. You killed Cell. You saved them, he told his son, finally calming down. Gohan sighed as he looked at his brother now standing at the same height as him, and Vegeta's daughter, Satsuki. Why did you do that? He asked the black-haired kid. He was referring to when his kid brother had weirdly wished to be as old as him. The dragon had granted the wish and disappeared. 
They had also left the lookout afterward, his mother wanting to mourn her husband's death. He was still upset with himself and had decided to dedicate himself to training his new form until he was in full control. Now, he just had to get the idea past his mother. Naruto looked at Satsuki, silently asking if she agreed with telling Gohan. She imperceptibly nodded her head, causing Naruto to release a sigh of relief before taking a deep breath and proceeding to tell his brother all about his and Satsuki's previous life. Gohan had been avoiding Naruto and Satsuki for a week now, he still couldn't believe it. His own little brother, a reincarnation of a ninja who had killed hundreds of innocents and thousands of non-innocents in cold blood, just for revenge. He had tried to think up of any ways to justify it, but he couldn't. In the next room, Naruto sighed. He had told Gohan what they did in their previous life, only the middle parts of it, before he ran off. He didn't hear his or Satsuki's early life or their later years when both had been happily together, even with the. Naruto shook his head. He had enough of Gohan brooding around. He needed to become stronger, both him and his lover. He left his room and busted down Gohan's room. Before his surprised brother could do anything, he growled at him to shut up and listen. Gohan decided to comply, wanting to know why, and sat down. After he had the permission to read his mind, Gohan closed his eyes and concentrated on Naruto's thought. He could see everything, from the beginning when he was a child, to when he died. After calming down a raging Gohan, something he was glad his mother from this timeline didn't see or hear, Naruto asked him to train Satsuki and him. Gohan agreed, but he told him that he would have to bring it past Chi-Chi. Naruto, having read his mother's diary, smirked at said to not worry about it before running downstairs. Chi-Chi looked up when she heard her son calling her from the stairs and raised an eyebrow. What is it, sweetie? Well, you see, I want to become strong so I asked Gohan to train me, Naruto said quickly. Seeing her about to protest, Naruto quickly went into his plan. Mom, if you do this, I can convince Gohan to go to high school, he whispered. Chi Chi snorted. She knew her son a bit better now and knew of his devious mind, she knew what he was going to do, but she wasn't letting it go easily. And why should I allow that? She asked him, because Gohan might meet a few friends. Some lady friends, he smirked as he wiggled his eyebrows at her. Chi Chi pretended to think for some time before agreeing but set down some rules. 1. You will go to wherever I choose. 2. You and your brother will still need to study at least 3 hours every day. 3. Gohan must get a girlfriend when he's 19, or else, I won't ever allow training, got it? She asked, although it wasn't really a question. Of course, Chi Chi was kidding. She wasn't going to ban one of their connections to their father. She could see that both of them enjoyed it and she wouldn't take one of the few things that did that away. Naruto agreed and Chi Chi called out Gohan to get down from the stairs. He sheepishly came down and told his mother that he agreed to her rules. Naruto grinned as he and Gohan did a fist pump of victory, not seeing Chi Chi's victorious smirk. Gohan took Naruto and teleported them both to Capsule Corporations before both went in using Gohan's full access card. Vegeta, while a stoic person, did love his daughter and treated her as his most prized thing, even above Bulma. As such, when the most important person in his life had requested to train him barely a month after being born, he was immensely proud. He had immediately begun training her, although he had been very gentle, teaching her lessons in key and a few more things. Unfortunately, a toddler could only handle so much and he knew it, even as a Saiyan, so he didn't go hard on her. One thing he taught her was key sensing, which she was currently using to get to Naruto and his older brother. After a few minutes, she traced them to her mother's lab. Dot you do it? Gohan asked. Bulma smirked at the two. Of course I can. I just need a day to make three, she told them. Satsuki coughed into her hands, bringing her mother and lover's attention to her. Gohan already knew she was there. In a deep cave, many scattered pieces of technology started to wiggle and shake before they all levitated. The pieces came together to form a head, but it was nothing like a normal head. Teal eyes snapped open as a figure came towards him. The figure, whose body shape declared was a male, picked up the head and walked towards a holding tank filled with green liquid. After being dunked into it, the head looked outwards, only to see his minions creating a body for him. Using his voice, he protested this, saying that he would make his own body when the time came. 
They obliged and stepped away from the body. The head looked around his nearly destroyed lab. All that had been left after they had come were a few regeneration tank and a large computer. The men, when they destroyed his labs, had, fortunately, not checked everything thoroughly. They had not checked to see what had survived before they left nor did they ever discover his secret pathways to different labs. After a few weeks, his minions had checked upon him and brought him together using metals and technology. They put him back together, though he was almost dead, aside from his head. With all the technology he had created before dying, it had been easy to bring him back. Now, he would take vengeance. They destroyed everything he ever had. His lab, his creations, and everything else. While he was in the tank, his supercomputer had been processing all news from outside and cross-referenced the important ones to check. Doctor, Alpha 5 to 8 grams has failed his mission and has been destroyed. Here is a picture of his killer. A female, mechanical voice echoed throughout the cave. So he has also failed. So many fails, too many. He brewed in his thoughts as he saw the picture. The one there surprised him. The blonde had defeated his creation? Impossible, inconceivable? Omake. How Goku and Vegeta beat Cell. Goku was currently rushing towards Cell, trying to lengthen the battle so his son could see the green grasshopper's fighting style. Cell laughed as he kept countering Goku's attack. You can't beat me Goku. I am perfect. Vegeta was getting very annoyed at the purple-eyed android's rant. Maybe I'll even torture your family and friends, after all, it's not like you can beat me. Goku was gritting his teeth. Cell was right, he was too weak against the android right now. I think Chi Chi should be first, what do you think? Cell knew everything about them, his stupid creator having installed a bug yo just follow them. It had not been destroyed and programmed into Cell, both this timeline and the alternate one. Trunks had just turned into his Super Saiyan form. He rushed towards Cell, intent on killing the bastard. He wouldn't let him kill his mother, not from this timeline or his own. Cell was too strong, however, and quickly blocked his attack before blasting a thin beam of ki through the lavender-haired teen, killing him instantly. Vegeta's anger soared through the heavens as his ki began to flare. He instantly turned into Super Saiyan, but his power kept growing, stronger and stronger, until he finally reached the limits and ascended into an unknown form the second level of the Super Saiyan transformation. Cell kept taunting Goku. Maybe that son of yours, Naruto? Goku's eyes turned crimson red as he roared out. His golden key became covered by a crimson outline. His eyes had become totally white, no iris or pupils, just pure whiteness. Cell laughed out loudly as he felt both Goku and Vegeta power up. Finally, they would challenge him. Cell could not do anything much longer as both Goku and Vegeta rushed towards him, ignoring their rivalry to kill the Ur in front of them. Cell stood no chance as they quickly beat him around before they both got ready for their final attack. Cell, still arrogant enough to believe he could win, decided to counter it. Ka mi ha mi. Ha! Goku shouted as Cell did the same attack. The two blue attacks clashed. But Goku's quickly become encased in a crimson light and began overpowering Cell. It has been seven long years since Gohan started to teach his brother and Satsuki. Both the boy and girl and soaked up what Gohan had taught them fast. By the first year had gone by, both had reached the second level of the legendary Super Saiyan transformation. Only Gohan and Dend had known. When the others had come to investigate, Satsuki had thought up a lie very fast. She had said that Gohan tried to see if he could do the transformation to the second level with half his key. Since the other two didn't know how much it took to get the second level and Gohan couldn't sense his own energy, so Gohan split using the multi-form. Both had powered up to SS1 but they could barely get up to second level. After they had transformed to the second level, Naruto and Satsuki didn't go back to the second level. They could still do it. They had reached it when they had imagined the Uchiha massacre and Naruto's life. Of course, Gohan was shocked as hell, I mean who the hell wouldn't, they had done the transformation with little training. After getting the gravity belt from Bulma, they had used it to get up as high as they could stand. 500, then, they had increased the level by 10 every day. By the fifth month, they both had reached up to 2000. Their strength, speed, and reflexes had improved highly.
Gohan had also taught them the demon, turtle, and Saiyan style. All three had eventually combined them into one style. It consisted of you using your own speed to get inside your opponent's guard and attacking them. Since it had the turtle style, they could also easily get into a defensive style. They had also created a similar style to fit them when they would grow older so that they wouldn't have a bad style as older people. Gohan had also taught them how to use Ki to sense others at a very far distance. He had taught them to use Ki to levitate objects. He had taught them Ki techniques like Kamehameha, Instant Transmission, Masenko, Super Ki Ball, and Multiform. They had also experimented on Ki techniques to create new ones. They had taught each other the techniques they created. Gohan had decided to teach them sword techniques as well. He asked Piccolo if he could create them a sword that was light and sharp. They had soaked up the art as well. Gohan had taught them his style, Light Sword. A style that relied on speed to attack a person. The technique however was brutal. If you charged it with key and slashed, it created an arch that can cut through anything if you refine the key enough. The sword would also cut through most materials as well. After Gohan had taught them all he could, they had always sparred each other once a day. They had always bet each other bad, but didn't let anyone bleed. A few other things had happened in the seven years. Krillin and Android 18 had gotten married and somehow had a child named Marin. Goden's son was born. He and Trunks were best friends. Goden was an exact replica of his father. When they were both old enough, Vegeta trained Trunks and Gohan trained Goden. X Renaissance X, Sunhouse, Gohan, Naruto, Get Down Here, screamed Chi Chi. Both appeared in front of their mother terrified that they were to get hit with her frying pan of doom. The two had grown up. Gohan has his hair much shorter. Body was the same, built for both speed and power. He was wearing black jeans along with a dark blue shirt. The shirt was not doing anything to hold his muscles down. Naruto was wearing blue S with a white T-shirt with a red spiral on the back. His hair was still the same except for the two bangs on the side of his head. His face had lost all the baby fat. His muscle had grown but still small. However, they were defined. What's up mom? asked Gohan. He, along with his brother, was studying the theory of quantum mechanics. Remember the packet I gave to you two a week ago? Chi Chi asked. The packet was an entrance exam that she made her sons take. She hadn't forgotten and when she heard that Satsuki would go with them, Bulma was told and she got one too. Yeah, still don't know what that was for. Naruto replied to his mother. The black-haired woman had given him and his brother a 40-page packet a week ago. It had questions that they had learned the answers to years ago. He remembered Satsuki saying that she got the same one from her mother. Well, that was an entrance exam to Orange Star High. Don't think I forgot the deal that we made seven years ago. I know Satsuki got one from Bulma as well. All three of you are going to Orange Star High in Satan City. Chi Chi explained, her frying pan was held up in her hands as she closed her eyes. A ah okay mom, when do we start? asked a nervous Gohan, he was looking at the frying pan. Tomorrow, she said with finality. Here is what you two will wear to school and in school, and this is your badge. She continued, she threw them orange khaki s, a white, baggy, long-sleeved shirt, a black vest, and a badge. There is no way in hell I'm wearing this sorry excuse for clothes, they're worse than my jumpsuits. Naruto thought with furious eyes. Gohan, can you go upstairs, I need to have a talk with mom. Naruto asked his brother, but if you looked at his eyes, it was a command. Gohan nodded his head, he knew his brother was going to ask their mother a way to change their clothes and he would only get in the way. He quickly headed upstairs. Okay mom. Remember how I said that I Gohan might find a female friend? A nod with sparkling eyes and a huge smile. If we, especially Gohan, wear that, no female friend will notice him. So how about this, we wear what we are wearing right now in normal clothing while going to school? Naruto requested. Chi Chi thought on this. If she let them do it, Gohan might find a nice woman to marry. She didn't need to worry about Naruto. She had seen the small motions that he and Satsuki made to each other. They were already in love and a relationship that was kept a secret from the others. She had told Bulma and they were happy to see them together. They were perfect for each other and showed and shared everything with each other. 
All right, I agree. She huffed, upset that the clothes she picked for them wasn't efficient. Tragedy averted. Naruto thought in relief. Next day. Naruto had called Satsuki to tell her the news. He also told her that she should meet them at the outskirts of Satan City and she had agreed. They had then woken up at 5 a.m. and instant transmissioned out there. After a few minutes of waiting, she had arrived. Satsuki had also grown up. She now had on a white t-shirt along with black s. Her hair was still the same spiky black, but a little bit longer. Her body had grown much as well. Her figure was much womanlier. She was also more muscular but it was fully concealed. Her black tail was wrapped around her waist, just like Naruto's. Hey Satsuki, you ready? Naruto asked with a smile. She nodded her head and all three headed towards the school. It took them a fair two hours to finally reach it since they had stopped to eat at a store and they didn't even know where the hell it was. The building was four stories tall with a tan coloring. It had glass windows everywhere with an orange star circle in the middle. Orange Star High School was written under it. They entered the building but there weren't any students besides them, though that was probably because they were half an hour early. They headed straight to the office, using the map at the back of their planner. After locating it, they headed inside to meet the secretary. She looked up at them and asked, Yes, what can I do for you, in a polite tone. We're new students so we came here to get our schedule, answered Satsuki. Ah yes, names, the woman asked, son Naruto, son Gohan, and Uchiha Satsuki, answered Naruto. Bulma and Satsuki had discussed with him and Gohan. She told him that because she was so famous, if Satsuki used briefs, everyone would know and pester her or try to get close with her to get to her mother. Satsuki had agreed and had supplied that she used a fake name to go to school. Naruto had supplied that she could use Uchiha. The others didn't know where that came from, but Satsuki agreed immediately and so, they didn't bother her. All right, please wait a moment while I print it out for you. The secretary said, she came back a minute later with three papers. Thank you, Gohan said as they left. So, what do you guys have? The former shinobi asked telepathically. All three looked at their schedule. Homeroom 213. History 207, AP Calculus 411, Astronomy 415, Physics 211, Physical Education, Study Hall 213. They all had the same classes at the same time. Well, that's convenient, he commented. They agreed with him. The black-haired teens went to their homeroom and knocked. A minute before in the classroom. All right students, there will be three more students in the classroom from now on. Treat them with respect the teacher said knock knock ah there they are the man muttered as he went to the door he unlocked it and three very good looking teenagers stepped in all three had raven black hair hello my name is mr bird he said hiya hello hey all three of them replied please introduce yourself to the class tell your name likes dislikes hobbies and dreams mr bird said Naruto and Satsuki shared a glance, deja vu much. All right, I'll go first, my name is Naruto-san. My likes are fighting, training, spending time with my family and friends. I dislike very few things that you guys don't need to know. My hobbies are training, fighting Gohan and Satsuki, and eating. My dream is personal, Naruto introduced. Everyone was stunned into silence, but it is never quiet for long. Oh, so cool. He's hot, he looks weak. All these and more were whispered around the room. Of course, with their say and hearing, they heard all of it. Satsuki glared at almost all the girls. Three people in the middle of the classroom were having their own conversation. Wow, he's cute, a blonde girl said. Her eyes were cerulean. She had yellow hair in the style of a bob cut, but shorter, with a lined green tube top and blue jeans. PSHH he looks like a weakling, Aressa. Retorted a boy with long yellow hair. He was bulging with muscles all over his arms. He had on a white muscle shirt and had on dark blue jeans. Sharpener, his muscles are more defined than yours. They also have a fighter's grace, which means that they are probably stronger than you. Said the observant vital, she had her hair done in two pigtails. She had sky blue eyes and was wearing a baggy shirt and black shorts. 
My name is Satsuki Uchiha. My likes and dislikes are none of your business. I have few hobbies. My dream is known to those who I know and like only. Satsuki introduced with a scowl. She was glaring at all the girls for reasons they didn't know. Damn, she's hot. She looks better than Vital. She's so beautiful. All the boys shouted. The girls were pretty much scared to comment. Suddenly, killer intent filled the classroom. It was only for an instant, but all the boys besides Gohan saw their lives flashing before their eyes. Gohan sent Naruto a questioning glance. Hey bro, what was that killer intent for? Gohan asked telepathically. Later, when we go home. Gohan, your turn. Naruto replied. My name is Gohan's son. I like to train, eat, my friends and family. I dislike bad people. My hobbies are eating and training. My dream is personal. Gohan also introduced himself. There were even more whispers of girls and boys. All right you three, find a seat. The teacher said. You who, up here, shouted Aressa. The black eyes teens looked at her and went up. They sat down, Gohan besides her, Naruto and Satsuki in front. When they sat down, the blonde hair girl introduced herself. Hello, my name is Aressa Brown. This is, Q gesture to Vital, as Vital Satan, and this is, gesture to the muscle boy, is sharpener pencil. Nice to meet you, Gohan replied. Naruto and Satsuki nodded their heads. Hey, you'll never guess who Vital's father is, Aressa continued in excitement. Aressa, growled Vital, she didn't want them to worship her because of her dad. Who? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. He was curious, why was the girl's father important? Hercule Satan, the man who beat Cell. She exclaimed. Naruto and Gohan had no idea who that was, but Satsuki did, she had met him at a few parties and always went on and on about how he beat Cell. Guys, it's the guy who took Gohan's credit for killing Cell. She said telepathically. Gohan and Naruto understood now. They didn't like him because of his constant beatdowns of the Z fighters. I feel sorry for you Vital. Naruto said. What? Why? She asked in disbelief and confusion. Let's see. He started sarcastically. Your father is always boasting on TV. If he does that on TV, he might as well do it at home. You have no privacy whatsoever. People will try to become your friends for money or to get closer to Mr. Satan. Also, you will always be in your father's shadow. People will try to credit your accomplishments to Mr. Satan since you're his daughter, the teen explained. Vital was shocked and considered this. He was right, whenever she stopped a crime they would say, that's Mr. Satan's daughter. Naruto's right, you know. Satsuki commented. Both Gohan and Vital nodded their heads. Aressa and Sharpener were still shocked. After few more minutes, the bell finally rung. Gohan, Naruto, and Satsuki followed Vital to their next class, History. They went into room 207 and sat at the back. The teacher looked up and said, All right students, today, we will be learning about Corrine's Tower. Open your textbook to Unit 7.1. The history teacher, Mrs. Hamilton said. Everyone followed the order and saw the title. Corrine Tower. Corrine's tower was a mythical tower that was built to honor a great warrior. On top of the tower lives a strong warrior, whose strength could rival the gods themselves. It is said that when a person climbs the tower, he or she will have their power drastically increase after drinking the sacred water. When you get to the top, you must pass a test and drink the water. It is very difficult to climb. It is said to be above the clouds in height. There have only been a few people who have successfully climbed it, them being the turtle hermit and his students. She explained. Is the tower real? Asked a student. It was obvious that he and most of the class were skeptical. However, one person was thinking. If I can climb the tower, I will be much stronger. This is just what I need. I should be able to get that sacred water and pass the test. I should go there tomorrow after school. Vital thought. She needed the strength that this could give her. She saw that only Gohan, Naruto, and Satsuki didn't doubt the teacher. Well, she got most of it right, but she got a few wrong. They wouldn't rival Dend or the Kais, thought the trio of key users. Well, I would think so, after I just told you all that some people have climbed it. The teacher replied to the student's question. Most still doubted her. I mean seriously, 
A super high tower that you must climb then drink water to become a lot stronger. Really? Among the students, one hand was raised. Mrs. Hamilton tracked it down to see Naruto. Yes Naruto, she asked, curious of what he wanted to know. What about the Nimbus Cloud? He asked, Naruto, that is just a legend. It isn't true, she dismissed him. One student named Vital was curious about that. So, she asked what the legend was. Since Naruto knows about it, why doesn't he tell us? The teacher asked, looking exactly at Naruto. Naruto easily accepted. All right, the Nimbus clouds were small clouds owned by Korin, which if were given to someone, that person could call on the cloud and it would fly them to a location of their choice. He would give these clouds to those who could withstand his tests. There were two kinds of them, the flying Nimbus and the dark Nimbus. The flying Nimbus could only be used by those with a pure heart. Any with an impure heart who tried to ride it would simply fall through it. The dark Nimbus was the opposite, only a person with an impure heart can ride it. The other difference between the two was that Corinne could make the person riding the dark Nimbus fall through if he wanted to. I think that about sums it up, right? He asked Gohan mentally. The other brother discreetly nodded his head. The teacher, and the students, were in awe. The teacher because she didn't even know most of that. The students cause they wanted to ride a cloud like that. Mrs. Hamilton asked, how did you know that? Even I didn't know most of that. She asked. Naruto shrugged his shoulder, wanting to keep it a secret. He took his seat back. For the rest of class, they learned more stuff about history. Finally, the bell rang to signal the students and teachers to switch. Satsuki, Naruto, and Gohan followed Vital to their next class. After AP Calculus and Astronomy, they left for lunch. The three Saiyans went to the roof of the school. They had packed huge lunches for each of them. They sat at the floor before throwing a capsule up into the air. In a poof of smoke, a huge amount of food appeared. They combined I together and now it was a mountain. It had enough food to last a family of three adults for a few weeks. Once their precious food appeared, the humongous eaters quickly dived in and finished everything within five minutes. After the food, they patted their stomachs in content and made the dishes reseal into the dino cap. Afterwards, they went down to the outside area and sat at a picnic table. They saw Vital, Aressa, and Sharpener coming towards them. Vital because she liked them since they didn't worship her father. Aressa because she was just nice. And Sharpener for the, hot babe, there. A few minutes later, Vital's watch started to beep. She quickly answered it. Hello Vital, we need your help here. A few robbers have robbed the bank and are holding people hostage. The police chief said. All right chief, I'll be right there. Vital responded. The girl quickly ran off to the roof. A minute later, a copter flew from there and left towards the robberies. Gohan looked at Aressa and curiously asked, isn't it dangerous for her to go? Aressa laughed and said, no, she is very strong, some say she is as strong as her. As strong as her father. I'm worried she's as weak as her father. Gohan thought. He quickly headed for the roof with Naruto and Satsuki following. When they got there, Satsuki asked. Where are you going Gohan? I'm gonna go and help her, was the reply she got. He, along with Naruto and Satsuki, performed the multiform technique. The clones went back down while the originals silently and flashlessly entered Super Saiyan and took off. They arrived at the crime scene and quickly flashed down. They knocked out the robbers and left. All the spectators saw was a blur of gold. When Vital arrived, she saw what happened and got the answers she needed and left in annoyance. Why did they call her when it was handled? She arrived at gym class at the same time as the Saiyan trio. She wondered why they were a bit late. All four went inside and saw the teacher. The man had a scar across his face. His slightly spiky hair in a ponytail. He had an orange and blue GI on. He was tall. Hello. My name is Yamcha Bandit. I am your physical education teacher. This unit was supposed to be baseball, but it was rearranged to be martial arts. Ha! Huh, bet you guys didn't think this would happen. The three super-powered teens were shocked at seeing one of their friends an AZ fighter there. Yamcha continued, for those above five years of martial arts experience stand to the right. Those who don't should stay at the left. A few jocks, Sharpener, Vital, 
Gohan, Naruto, and Satsuki went to the right. The rest went left. All right, each of you will tell me how much of experience and which style and dojo you practiced under. He said, looking at the so-called experienced fighters. He went to the jocks first. Six years. Satan style. Satan dojo. All of them replied proudly. Sharpener. Seven years. Satan style. Satan dojo. Vital. Eleven years. Satan style. Satan dojo. When he got to Gohan, his eyes widened in surprise. A grin on his face as he said, Hey Gohan, I didn't know you went to school. The boy raised his hand to his head and sheepishly said, Yeah, mom forced me and Naruto to come here in exchange for training a bit every day. Well, tell me what and who, where you learned from. Yamcha said, How old was I when Raditz happened? Gohan questioned cryptically. Four, all right, fourteen years, came style, demon style, kami style, and saiyan style. Came from Dad, Demon from Piccolo, Saiyan from Vegeta, Kami style. Created, he announced. All the class heard and their eyes widened upon how long he was training. Naruto and Satsuki at the same time, nine years. Came style. From Gohan, Demon style. Gohan, Saiyan style. Gohan, Kami style. Created. Stated. All the class's eyes, besides Yamcha, widened. How could they both have trained for that long? Especially Gohan for 14 years. That would have meant that he started at 4 year old. Vital was mostly shocked. She always thought that she had trained for her entire life. She prided herself on starting at 7. Now she understood that training for entire life had a different meaning. How is that possible? I have trained for over many years, but it isn't possible to start that young. Screamed Vital to Gohan. The questioned one shrugged. How was he supposed to tell her that he had to so he could help save the world? Enough. Let's get started. The advanced students will be learning another style called Kame. It was a style created by Master Roshi. The non-advanced ones will learn the Katas of fighting only. Once they finish that, they can learn the Kame style. Okay. He yelled. All the students nodded in agreement. Since Gohan, Naruto, and Satsuki already know this, they can spar with each other. He finished. The trio nodded their heads in consent. They headed towards the less populated area. All three of them increased the gravity to 2150. They had gotten an upgraded version of it and used it. This would allow them to fight at human speed while training. All three went up to the ring and made a three-way fight. Hey, let's make this a free-for-all. Satsuki said. The other two agreed with nods. All got into their stances. Vital who was watching them discreetly, widened her eyes. Impossible, there is no opening at all. Their stances are perfect. The Saiyans shot towards the middle and threw out their hands into a punch. The Medan jumped back. Satsuki shot at Gohan and punched him, but he ducked. He got sent into the air by Naruto a second later. Naruto and Satsuki then faced each other, until Gohan came down. They then met at the middle and threw forward a controlled punch. Afterwards, they all got out of their stances and left the ring. They then too saw the students giving them a shocked and awe look. They quickly left the class before they were questioned. They went to study hall. Back at the gym, Vital Satan had a thought. I knew they were hiding something. Well, I will find out their secrets. After doing what they needed to in study hall, they quickly left to the roof then instant transmission to capsule core. While walking in the hallway, Gohan asked Naruto. Hey bro, why were you releasing killer intent at the boys earlier? Because they were staring at Satsuki with lust. He replied to his brother with a hiss. Why were you mad though? The boy continued. Because Naruto and I are dating. Satsuki quickly interfered. Gohan stopped walking, stunned. He quickly recovered and asked more questions like when. Or who knows. They finally reached the living room and saw Bulma there. Hey kids, what's up? She asked. Hello mom, we were hoping that you could make us a costume. We need them so that we can help people in Satan City. Satsuki asked her mother. Sure hun, I can make it by tomorrow. Any requests? She asked. Yeah, can you make it look like my GI? The oldest asked. Can you make mine look like a black cloak with viridian fire at the bottom licking out? The other son asked. I want mine to be my normal clothes. 
I just have to change into something else before school. The only girl asked. Sure, the blue-haired genius said. The sons then left to their home. They teleported behind the sun matriarch who screamed in surprise. Their little brother jumped on them and asked them to play. Come on, let's go play, big bro and big brother. Godin said. They left the house and went to the fields near the lake. They played water tag for the day and slept after eating. Next day at CC, all three Saiyans were walking to the lab. They had come before school so they could get their costumes. They entered the lab and were handed three watches. Bulma explained the functions to them. Afterwards, they entered the costumes and looked exactly like they wanted. Naruto was in a black cloak with viridian flames at the bottom. Gohan had the same outfit as the Cell Games but without the cape. Satsuki had on black shirt with white S. All three transformed into Super Saiyans. What are you gonna call yourself? Asked the genius woman. Viridian Flash, said Naruto. Golden Warrior, responded Gohan. I am gonna call myself, said Satsuki. The Saiyan trio were walking through the streets. They had woken up at 7 and had around 30 minutes to get to class. As they were walking, a bullet shot right in front of them. They quickly looked at the right and saw a bank robber with a gun up. There were many people surrounding the bank. In front of them were police cars turned into barriers. Hey guys, let's go the alley and change really fast. Satsuki telepathically said. The boys nodded and all three headed towards the alley. With a quick yell, they powered up until they boosted up to the legendary transformation of the Saiyan race. They then pressed the button on their watch. They were covered in bright light and then it left. No they were wearing their new costumes. Naruto, Satsuki, and Gohan quickly flashed to the crime scene. Gohan then flashed behind the thugs and knocked the thugs out. Satsuki and Naruto also flashed away and punched the other low life. After knocking them out, they got the hostages out and phased in front of another thug. The person was knocked out, but another one shot three rockets. The three put their hands up and redirected it back. When it was close to the thug, it exploded, sending the robber into a police car. Suddenly, a copter echoed into the area. They saw Vital land her vehicle in the middle of the place and jumped out. She saw the scene in front of her and her eyes widened before settling in annoyance. Thank you for helping us out, a police officer said. They nodded and tried to leave, but were stopped by the chief. Excuse me, may we know the name of the people who helped us? He asked. We can't tell you our real names as that would endanger our families and friends so we will give you our code names. My name is Viridian Flash, said Naruto. Golden Fighter, said Gohan. Golden Phoenix, answered Satsuki. The police chief nodded his head and they left. They heard a copter following them and saw that it was Vitals. They let her chase them for a few minutes before teleporting to the roof of Orange Star High. They powered down and switched their clothes and rushed into their homeroom. Five minutes later, Vital came through the door. She went up to her seat next to Aressa. The girl was questioned by her bubbly friend. Why are you so pissed V? Questioned her best friend. When I got to the crime scene, I saw that a bunch of people had already taken care of them. They took my job. I don't need their help. She shouted angrily. Those bastards took her job. It was her job. She had worked so damn hard for it and they just took it. Who are they? Questioned Aressa. She understood her friend's anger. They called themselves the Viridian Flash, Golden Fighter, and Golden Phoenix. She snarled. The Saiyans below her were questioning why she was so mad. Isn't it good to be helped? The bell rang and all the class left homeroom. The Saiyan trio and Vital went through all the classes until gym. Everyone, today, you will learn the more advanced forms of the Kame style. Yamcha said to the class. The class got started on the katas while Naruto, Satsuki, and Gohan meditated at the corners. The gravity was increased so it was both physical and mental training. They did some image fighting until they heard a beep from Vital's communicator. Vital told Yamcha that she had to leave and left quickly. The black-haired teens followed her. They went to the roof and created one clone each. The clones left back to the class. Golden Phoenix, Fighter, and Viridian Flash were quickly flying towards the crime scene. They got there just after Vital did. 
Vital landed and looked out to see two people using those light tricks to blow the buildings up. Those stupid idiots, why use those lights when the bombs are already there? Idiots. Hey, you tricksters, stop using those light tricks and come with me. Vital screamed in a snarl. She hated people like this. They had no martial arts experience and used tricks to seem strong. The black-haired teen quickly rushed into the younger ones first. He was a large, heavily built muscular man. He dons a brown brassard and belt combination, large brown gloves, a long green skirt, and yellow and black boots. His skin tone is a shade of silver and has brown eyes. He blocked her attack and swatted her aside. She went flying to the building, but was caught by the golden fighter. He settled her at the ground and looked forward. Naruto had destroyed the silver thing. What the eye can't sense his energy, is it another android? I though we destroyed them. Did some of them escape? Gohan thought ferociously. He then looked at the other, android, who he couldn't sense key from. It was a very short and small man. He has large pink lips and dark skin tone. He also dons a large green hat with a red ball on top, what some consider the rendition of a pimp's hat. He has a black and white tuxedo shirt with a dark yellow and blue overcoat. He also wears a red bow tie sporting the red ribbon logo. He also wears baggy light blue S and black boots. Underneath his hat, he also has a white glass dome cranium. Gohan saw the RR ribbon and widened his eyes. So, I am right, they are androids. I should tell them, he thought while setting up a mental connection. Naruto, Satsuki. They are androids, you need to destroy them. There is only vital here and she isn't important right now. You can destroy them. He sent the message telepathically. He saw both nod. When Satsuki got Gohan's message, she was surprised that they were androids. She tried to sense the android's key, keyword, tried. The thing didn't have any sensible key. After sensing that, she sent a key blast at its arms and legs. The android droid was too slow and the targets were hit. It screamed in pain, but stayed in place. Who sent you? Why are you here? Etc. Questioned Satsuki. Skip torture scene due to fanfiction's rating T. Me and my partner are android 14 and 15. We were from Dr. Jero's second lab. We were set to activate seven years after Dr. Jero died. We also ha, boom. Android 15 exploded into many pieces. Satsuki covered her front with her arms. A second later, Android 14 also exploded. Naruto and Satsuki jumped back to Gohan and were about to fly off when Vital stopped them. Wait, why did you kill those people? You were murderers. Vital screeched very loudly. Gohan stopped and was followed by his friend and brother. Miss Vital, those were androids, not people. Also, why are you screaming at us for killing them? They exploded due to self-destruction. Another thing, did you scream at your father the same way after the Cell Games? I must call you a hypocrite if you don't. After all, doesn't almost all of the world praise your father and kiss his ass for killing eight living beings? My friends here killed two non-living beings. Your father supposedly killed Cell and the blue small cells. Questioned and stated Gohan with a calm voice, but if you looked at his eyes, you would see a raging inferno of anger. Vital's eyes widened in shock. She never thought about it that way. She had always looked up to her father and thought him as the greatest. Now, she realized that she did it, knowing he had killed people. But still, that's different, he did it to save the world. If he didn't, billions of people would have died. She tried to reason, she wanted to defend her father after all. Really, didn't we do the same? We killed them, non-living beings, to save millions of lives. Naruto said, his eyes were the same as Gohan's. Don't you dare call my father a serial killer. The pig-tailed girl. Why not? You have seen me take the life of one man and you make such a crisis out of it, but you hail your father for killing eight people. And don't say that this case is different. Here, my friends killed the androids because they harmed the city. And we didn't even kill them. They self-destructed. Your father claims he killed Cell and his seven blue small cells without any problems, killed them all because the entire planet asked him to. If that's true, then he is no different than a murderer. Gohan continued, still looking calm. For the second time in days, Vital was left speechless. These people know these monsters, standing in front of her, 
claimed her father was a worse killer than they were. And she couldn't disagree with him, because her father had taken those eight lives. And he had always said that none of them were a match for him. The Saiyans left before she could say anything else. Naruto, Satsuki, and Gohan met their clones in the air since school just ended. They merged and headed to Mount. Paozu and trained for a few hours until Satsuki left. With Vital. Vital had just gotten home from the scene. She went upstairs and saw her father coming down. She needed to ask him a question. She didn't want to believe the golden fighter. Her father might have killed them, but he wasn't proud of killing. Hey dad, are you happy and proud that you killed Cell and those small cells? She asked. She was praying to God that he wasn't. Ha 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 ha. Of course I am proud of killing them. He shouted like the big idiot he is. Vital quickly rushed through her father, tears in her eyes. She needed to think of more things, like looking for what that RR ribbon on the android was. She quickly rushed to her computer and put Google up. She searched up RR ribbon and nothing showed up. She then saw, did you mean red ribbon? And clicked it. The first tab was red ribbon army. She went to the website and read it. The Red Ribbon Army was a powerful military army. Their goals were unknown. It was known that the RR Army commanders. At first, they were weapon developers, but were overtaken by Capsule Corporation. The Red Ribbon Army was later defeated by a boy named Sun Goku. Wait a minute, Sun Goku. As in the same as Sun Gohan and Naruto. That would mean that those two would know something about that. Vital put an end to her thoughts and searched up Sun Goku. A picture of a 12-year-old boy with orange and blue GI showed up. He had black spiky hair, a brown furry belt, blue shoes and black eyes. She saw a site that showed all the information. Sun Goku 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament Champion. Vital Red. Goku first competed in the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament at the age of 12. In the final round Goku battles with defending champion Jackie Chun and ends up losing the match making him the runner-up. Three years later at the age of 15, Sun Goku competes in the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament and battles in the final round with Tian Shinhan. At the end of the match Tian Shinhan wins the tournament due to the fact that Goku hit the ground first after he and Tian Shinhan both fell out of the ring. Man, this guy was good. He was just a kid when he was runner-up in two tournaments. Vital thought, then proceeded to read the rest of the article. Sun Goku returns three years later at the age of 18 for the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament. In the quarterfinals Goku is matched up against an unknown female fighter. After Goku defeats her, she reveals herself to be Chi Chi a girl Goku met when he was a boy. Before leaving the ring, Goku asks Chi Chi for her hand in marriage. After a fierce battle between Goku and Ma Jr., Goku won the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament and he hasn't competed ever since. He is now married to Chi Chi, Vital read the rest. She then put up a video from the 21st WMAT and saw the entire video of the finals. She looked at the face of Goku and Jackie Chun. They both had a blue ball of light in their hands. There were no lights or mirrors to make it a trick. The two also had concentration on their face, as if it was hard to do what they were doing. Those light balls weren't tricks, they were real. My dad lied to me. Wait, if Goku can do this, that means Naruto and Gohan should be able to do this and so should Satsuki. Somehow, they are always in class, so they can't be the three superheroes. At the corner of her eyes, she saw something else. She clicked it and watched it. One hour later, Vital left her house and traveled to the northeast. Headed towards the those light balls weren't tricks, they were real. My dad lied to me. Wait, if Goku can do this, that means Naruto and Gohan should be able to do this and so should Satsuki. Somehow, they are always in class, so they can't be the three superheroes. At the corner of her eyes, she saw something else. She clicked it and watched it. One hour later, Vital left her house and traveled to the northeast. Headed towards the mythological place called Korin's Tower. After traveling for a few hours, Vital finally saw a small pole-like structure stretch towards the clouds. As she got closer, she saw that the pole was actually much more of a pillar. She landed about 200 meters from the tower. The black-haired teen capsulized her copter and put it in her pouch. 
She then headed towards the tower. After entering a clearing, Vital looked up and was shocked to see a man point a spear at her. The man appears to be Indian 29 years old. His muscles are very defined. He was wearing tan s that were made of animal leather. His upper body is bare, showing all his muscles. Across his chest, from his shoulder to hips, is a strap that carries a basket with many arrows in them. Looking at his face, she notes that his hair is a light shade of black, his eyes being the same color. Identify yourself and goals here stranger, you are trespassing into the land of Korean. He says with his eyes narrowed. My name is Vital Satan, I am here to climb the tower so that I can become stronger. She identified. A woman came from behind the man and put her hand over his shoulders. He finally let the spear out of her face. Hello, my name is Upa, my people are the guardians of Korean Tower as well as the land of Korean. I wish you luck upon your journey to the top of the tower and when you meet Master Korean. The now known Upa told her. Vital nodded her head and walked over to the tower. She jumped on it started climbing up. Three hours after starting, damn it, I still can't see the top. How high is this tower? Vital thought. Nine hours after starting, come on, I have to be at least one half way there by now. Thought Vital who was not even one third way there. 35 hours after starting, Vital looked up to see four holes. With new vigor, the team climbed faster until she finally went inside the hole. She looked around and saw nothing except pots of water. Finally, darkness ensnared her. Two hours later, she woke up. She looked down and saw a bed. Wonder how I got here, she mused. Getting of the bed, she went to the three pots from before. Being the curious teenager that she was, she lifted the lid of the first one and looked at it. The water rippled and suddenly, she was looking at her father. He had a circular disc in his hands that were labeled cell games. Her crystal blue eyes narrowed upon seeing it. The black-haired woman had never seen her father watching it, hell, she had never seen the damn thing. She continued watching him go to the attic and went to his DVD cabinet. What she didn't expect was him to move at the side. Behind the cabinet was a safe. He quickly put in a seven-digit code and put the DVD inside. She then put the wooden lid back. What was that? That looked like what is happening right now. Did that pot just show me the present? No. Get your head together Vital. That's not possible for tap water. Vital was having an internal debate right now. She went to the second pot and just like the first, it started to ripple. Through the pot she sees a woman appearing. The woman looked to be around 20 to 21. She has black straight hair with crystal blue eyes, like her own. The woman was wearing a purple blouse with black tight jeans. The woman was holding a younger Vital's arms. Then, the vision disappears. What the hell? That was mom and me. Did I really just see the past? Mom, I wish you were still here. Sadly thought a slightly crying Vital. After taking a few minutes to recompose herself, she went to the next pot. Like before, the liquid undulated before showing another vision. This time, she saw herself looking at six glowing people. All were glowing blue from what she saw. They all had long, spiky, golden hair that reached their back. Their eyes were a teal blue. Three of the people looked very similar to the Golden Phoenix, Golden Fighter and Viridian Flash. The other three were, an extremely muscular, yet short guy. The other was very like the older Golden Fighter from the Cell Games. The last one was a very young boy. He looked very much like a nine-year-old. He had on a dark blue vest with golden trimmings. He also had on lavender baggy s. The fighter with an orange and blue GI started to glow. Once more, the vision stopped. Vital had to wonder what she just saw. What she didn't expect was a voice answering her. The past, the present, and the future, that is what you saw. You know, I'm impressed that you were able to climb the tower in 35 hours. The voice answered her and spoke in question. Vital spun her head round and widened her eyes upon seeing a chubby, small cat with a wooden cane. Hello, my name is Corinne what is yours? Asked the cat politely to the still stunned girl. The great master Corinne is a talking cat. Wait a minute, I took nearly one and a one half days to get here. Thought Vital, you're Corinne, the master martial artist, can you tell me where the sacred water is? The girl rapidly fired questions. Why do you want to drink the sacred water? 
Corrine questions. He needed to see if this girl had any evil intentions. I want it so that I can become stronger and protect Satan City better. She replies, her fist up in determination. She looks at Corrine who starts to walk away. Thinking that he was going to lead her to the sacred water, she follows him. They both get to the next floor. It was a plain room without walls. In the middle was a statue with an artistic bottle on it. The sacred water is within that bottle, you may drink it, Corrine says while smiling. Huh, it's that easy. All right then, I guess. Vital was confused, but went to the bottle. Just as she was about to grab it, a cane came from thin air and smacked her away. She grabbed her face and looked at Corrine, who was in the place that she was. Why did you do that? I thought you said I could drink it. The daughter of Miguel questioned. I thought you were smarter than that, you were told that I guarded the sacred water, yet never thought that I wouldn't just give it. Corrine said, to get the sacred water, you must first get past me. With a roar she lunged forward. This went on for a few hours. Vital would try to catch Corrine, but the cat would dodge every time. After finally getting tired, she finally went to the sleeping room. Corrine walked past her and got onto the bed, the sacred water still on his staff. She spent many minutes thinking, should I take it? Until she finally decided that she shouldn't. The next day, the second Satan woke up with a yawn. Vital went up to the next floor and saw Corrine finish eating a sweet bun. Corrine grabbed something and threw it right at her. On instinct, she threw her hand forward and caught it. Looking down, she saw that it was a green bean. Eat it, it will make you full. Corrine said without looking up. The teen did as told and felt her stomach full. Corrine got up and made a, come on, motion, holding his staff with the sacred water up. She lunged at him once more. Read my movement, predict my next one. Corrine said as he kept dodging the young human. Vital calmed herself and tried to grab him. He went left and she moved to him, barely catching him. When she did so, her pouch fell of. Corrine grabbed it and asked, Ho, oh, is this yours? He asked. Yeah, she said back, ing and greedily sucking the air. Well, I guess it isn't important. He says and throws it off the tower. Vital's eyes widened and she chased after it. She jumps of the tower and lunges towards her pouch. Damn that stupid cat, if my pouch hits the ground and mom's picture cracks, I'm going to the kill the bastard. Vital thought as she raced against the pouch. Twenty seconds later, she finally caught the pouch. She fished through it and grabbed her copter capsule. Vital threw it up, and when it came out, she grabbed the landing gear at the bottom and pushed herself up and went into the copter. The spawn of Satan quickly started the thing and let it hover. The teen then looked out the window and saw that she had barely avoided hitting the ground, being only ten feet from the ground. The teen got out of the copter and went to the tower. Damn it, I have to climb this thing again. Good thing it's spring break. She thought gratefully. Vital went towards the bottom of the tower and started to climb up. Five hours later, she had finally made it up there. The girl then went towards the top floor once again. There was Corrine, his staff with him. She ran at him, but went straight through him. She then looked all around and saw a bunch of corns. She looked towards each one carefully to see which one cast a shadow and was breathing. She saw that it was the one that was far left. She went for the one near him, but quickly changed direction towards the real cat. The staff was knocked out of his hands. She took the bottle and started drinking it. Hey, this tastes like normal water. The girl realized. Well, I should hope so. After all, it is just tap water. What? Then what was all that chasing about? And how did I finally catch you? She asked. The cat snorted and started to laugh. That was all your training. When you climbed up twice, it increased your speed drastically. When chasing me, you learned to use your senses to track me. Didn't you realize that it took you 35 hours to climb the tower once, but only 5 this time? Vital's eye started to twitch but decided to leave the cat alone. Here, you can use this to go back home. Corrine said as a nimbus cloud came. Vital hesitatingly got on it. Since she didn't fall through, she got comfortable. Nimbus, Satan City, the cat commanded. The cloud flew of to Satan City with a screaming Vital on it. One hour later, she got to Satan City. The cat snorted and started to laugh. 
That was all your training. When you climbed up twice, it increased your speed drastically. When chasing me, you learned to use your senses to track me. Didn't you realize that it took you 35 hours to climb the tower once, but only 5 this time? Vital's eye started to twitch but decided to leave the cat alone. Here, you can use this to go back home. Corrine said as a nimbus cloud came. Vital hesitatingly got on it. Since she didn't fall through, the girl got comfortable. Nimbus, Satan City, the cat commanded. The cloud flew up to Satan City with a screaming vital on it. One hour later, she got to Satan City. Since there was still a day before spring break, Vital decided to go to her home and train her speed and strength. The cat had taught her that speed mattered as much, if not more, than strength. After all what was the point in being strong if you couldn't hit them? What was the point in being faster when you couldn't hurt the opponent? When the cloud finally came up to Satan Mansion, Vital jumped off the, the golden cloud and onto the top of her house. The woman went towards the gym and walked towards the weights. She tied them around her wrist and ankles. Vital then went towards the punching bag and started to kick and punch it. It was a bit harder, but not by much. After that, she spent the rest of her time doing what she could to figure out how to do those attacks that the previous martial artists used. So far, the only one she found was the after image technique. However, the Satan girl could not figure out how to do it. The next day, Vital was flying towards school in her copter. Once she reached the school, she set her copter on the roof and left towards class. She just missed three beings teleport right behind her. They were Naruto, Satsuki, and Gohan. The three had tried to figure out everything they could during the six days break from school. They got no information except for the fact that there were more androids. They had gone to Bulma since she still had the data of Android 16, but she was unable to get any information. Gohan had gone to Android 18 to see if she had any idea about it. Flashback. Gohan was outside the sun house when trying to think about any clues that the androids could have left behind. That's when a thought came to him. Wait, androids. Of course, 18 should know about the previous types before herself and her brother. The Saiyan human hybrid put his finger up to his forward and concentrated on Krillin's KI. Quickly finding it, he teleported to the location. Hey Krillin, can I talk to 18, I have questions for her. Gohan asked his godfather. Sure bro, what do you need to know anyway? Asked the no longer bald fighter. Two androids named 14 and 15 attacked Satan City. They were saying something, but exploded. I have a feeling that they didn't self-destruct. Pretty sure that there are more androids too, so I want to ask 18 if she knows any. The warrior answered. At that time Android 18 came out of the house with a four-year-old Marin walking next to her. She has shoulder-length blonde hair, blue eyes. The left side of her hair is behind her ear. She wore a pale blue buttoned-up denim vest, white jeans, red hoop earrings along with a red bracelet on her left hand, and black flip-flops. Her blue eyes had a slightly darker coloration than last time he saw her. Hey 18, long time no see. Gohan greeted. 18 smiled at her savior and replied. Nice to see you Gohan. What do you need? The teen put his hand behind his head and scratched it while smiling sheepishly. Well, you see, two androids attack the place where Naruto, Satsuki, and I go to school at. I was wondering if you knew anything about them. He asked. Sorry kid, but Jero didn't program us to know the other androids. I only knew 17 because he was my brother. All I know is that he deemed the other androids before 16 as failures, she replied while shaking her head. The black-haired teen nodded his head and said, No problem, thanks anyways 18 inches with that, he teleported back to the house. Flashback end. The three went towards their classes. All of them was boring and they barely learned anything. The only class they enjoyed was physical education. All right. Some of you have mastered the basics, while a few of you have mastered the Kame style. Now, that you have, I have a special gift for you. When I call you, come with me. Gohan, Naruto, Satsuki, Vital. Yamcha said. The four mentioned students went with Yamcha to the storage unit of the gym. Yamcha knew that the Saiyans didn't want to reveal much so he made them come. Once they were there, he opened up a capsule and threw it forward. In a poof of smoke, 
four neatly folded pieces of clothes that were similar to what they were wearing. Yamcha handed them out to the students. Now that you have mastered the Kame style, I have given each one of you weighted clothing. They, in total weight around 100 pounds. You should wear it at all times except for bed or when you need to get it off, I have put a button on it that will stop the weights. You four should take it off once a week to get used to the difference in speed and strength as well as few other increased stats. Yamcha explained, mostly to Vital. The four changed, away from each other. They all found the weight to be heavy, so the Saiyan trio lowered the gravity belt to 1500. Remember, they weigh somewhere between 100 to 200 pounds. Let's say they weighed about 150. 150 plus 100 x 2500 equals 625,000. They would need to go to Super Saiyan for a few days. They have already adjusted to the huge amounts of weight, but suddenly adding 250,000 pounds wouldn't work. 150 plus 100 x 1500 equals 375,000, the same amount as before. Saiyans adjust very fast to weights, but not that much. Vital was also on the ground, due to the weight. She slowly got up as she slowly adjusted to it. The four went back to the gym after Vital adjusted to the weight. Once they got back, Yamcha told the four of them to start running around the gym. The Saiyans slightly increased their gravity belt so they got more training. They then started to run around the gym. After 10 laps, they were all tired, though the three hybrids were faking. After this, Yamcha came to them to teach them another technique. He took them outside this time. All right, today I will teach you the after image technique. It is a very useful technique. Most often, it is used to dodge an incoming attack and get behind the opponent to perform a counterattack. Its usage is not limited to just counterattacks, though, as it can also be used to confuse enemies. The image is used to distract the enemy, forcing them to think it is the actual fighter and giving the user a chance to perform the actual attack. Maybe you could find another use. Anyways, theoretically, the afterimage technique is a move that can be performed, since it merely requires moving faster than the eye can see. Yamcha explained, he then showed them how to perform it. Naruto and Satsuki got it in the first try, Gohan already knew it. Vital was unable to create an afterimage until she deactivated the weights. After both the gym, and later study hall, was dismissed, Vital pulled Gohan, Naruto, and Satsuki aside. Hey Gohan, Naruto, Satsuki. Can I talk to you three of the roof? She asked. They looked at each other, then back at her, nodding then head. The four headed towards the roof. Once there, Vital turned around and sighed. I want to ask you three to teach me how to fly and other stuff. She said bluntly. The Saiyan trio were surprised at what she said. W what are you talking about Vital? Asked Gohan. I know that you three are the golden fighter. Points at Gohan. Golden Phoenix, Satsuki, and Viridian Flash, and Naruto. How did you figure? He asked. You guys left a lot of open clues. Three new students, three new superheroes. I also watched the video of the previous fight and matched you with Son Goku. Points at Naruto and Gohan. I saw them doing all those things. I also saw a man named Tien form a clone. Since they were friends, I assumed that he could have taught it to you. I also looked at a picture of the golden fighter there. I connected the to you and Goku and they looked exactly the same. I changed their hair color and they looked almost exactly the same. I knew that that meant Gohan was there at the Cell Games. They all flew and shot those blasts and now I know they are real. I want to learn about them. Please, I already trained with Korin. She explained then pleaded using the infamous puppy eyes. Naruto, Satsuki and Gohan were shocked that she figured all that out, as well how many clues there were. Gohan knew she was smart, but now he knew how much. All right, I'll teach you to fly as well as use KI. Gohan told her. He, she tilted her head in question. Gohan had to admit, she looked pretty cute. He, it's what we use to fly, as well as what those, blasts, are composed of. He had told them when they questioned what it was. He had said, he is also known as, latent energy, or, fighting power, which directly translates as, life force. This force is a tangible energy inside every living being, with its major focus being in the center of the body. By drawing it out, 
an individual is able to manipulate it and use it outside the body. Qi can be used for many different techniques. Because there are physical limits to the strength of the body itself, it is necessary to increase one's ki to overcome this barrier and become stronger. Usually, the more concentrated the masses are, the more time the user requires to draw it out by powering up. When fighters gather ki, they are able to gain enhanced strength, speed, endurance, and can increase the power of their attacks to inflict greater damage to opponents. Normally, the more the key is increased, the harder it is to control, so key control is also important. Energy can be lost when the user sustains injuries. Gohan gave Vital a simple explanation of it, mostly the vital parts. Vital, you can come to our house when you want. We can teleport you there if you want. He asked. Vital nodded. Me and Naruto live at MT. Paozu. It's at the 439 mountain area. Sure, I'll come tomorrow okay. She questioned they nodded and teleported away. Vital was amazed by this and hoped that they taught her how to do that too. She then unloaded her copter and went home. With the sons, after they teleported outside their house, they went in to find Godin at the kitchen table and Chi Chi cooking. They both sat down as well and once Chi Chi finished, they started to stuff their faces. Chi Chi wears a yellow uniform with a purple cloth tied on the back with all of her hair put into a bun and also wears white Chinese earrings. Goten's appearance as a child is very similar to Goku's childhood look, including messy, unkempt hair and a playful face. He also wears a similar orange GI to Goku's, minus the cane symbol along with a dark blue long-sleeved undershirt and black training shoes with dark blue shin guards. After eating enough food to last humans for months, but a Saiyan for a few hours, Chi Chi saw that the boys wanted to talk to her about something. Goten, go to your room, I need to talk to your brothers. Goten looked up and nodded his head, not wanting to anger his mom to hit him with the frying pan. All right you two, what do want to talk with me about? The black-haired mother asked her so with narrowed eyes and frying pan up. W well, why you see, a girl found that we could used key. She asked us to teach her and I didn't see anything wrong with it so I agreed. She will come by after school. Gohan nervously explained to his mother. A girl huh? Seems that Naruto was right. Well I'll allow this seeing as it can lead to them falling for each other. Obviously this girl is a fighter, perfect for keeping my baby in line. She is also smart, another point for her. Well, I'll wait my judgment about her until I meet her. Chi Chi thought, all right. I'll allow this training. I better not catch you and her doing anything inappropriate Gohan. The human mother said. Gohan blushed bright red at the implications. He stuttered out. M Mon we're not going to do that. Me and Vital are just friend. Friends right. What about? Naruto. Her eyes are so beautiful. Naruto asked with a grin. Gohan looked at his brother with a betrayed look, but quickly covered his ears as a loud squeal came from behind him. Chi Chi was of in La La Land so the two brothers quickly went to their bedroom and slept. A girl huh, seems that Naruto was right. Well I'll allow this seeing as it can lead to them falling for each other. Obviously this girl is a fighter, perfect for keeping my baby in line. She is also smart, another point for her. Well, I'll wait my judgment about her until I meet her. Chi Chi thought, all right, I'll allow this training. I better not catch you and her doing anything inappropriate Gohan. The human mother said. Gohan blushed bright red at the implications. He stuttered out. M Mon we're not going to do that. Me and Vital are just friend. Friends right, what about? Naruto, her eyes are so beautiful. Naruto asked with a grin. Gohan looked at his brother with a betrayed look, but quickly covered his ears as a loud squeal came from behind him. Chi Chi was of in La La Land so the two brothers quickly went to their bedroom and slept. Next day, after school, Vital went to her home. She saw her father watching his, Glory Days, aka World Martial Arts Tournament. Vital walked up to him and asked, Dad, I'm going to be going to a friend's house, okay. Hercule, Mark, Satan was distracted while watching his tournaments. When his daughter walked up to him to tell him she was going to go to a friend's house, he nodded his head, never thinking that Vital only called Aressa and Sharpener friends. Vital was happy at this and went outside and uncapsuled her copter. It was a Saturday so she could leave to Gohan's house at the time. 
The Satan girl started her copter and blasted forth to the 439 mountain area that Gohan said he lived. After two hours, Vital finally arrived at the mountain range. Looking around the forest and river-covered mountain, she was able to find a small house. Setting her copter down, after setting it down, Vital went to the door. She knocked on it a couple times until a young boy with spiky hair opened the door. The kid was wearing a orange and blue GI and had an innocent smile on his face. Hello, my name is Godin. What are you doing here? Are you the vital that Gohan talked about? Are you his girlfriend? You're really pretty. The boy asked rapidly. Vital blushed at hearing what he said about her being Gohan's girlfriend. Hello Godin. I am here to train with your brother since he promised to teach me about Ki and how to use it. I probably am. No and thank you. Vital answered the kid's questions and compliment. All right, let me call Ni Chan down real fast. Godin looks in and takes a deep breath. Gohan, a real pretty lady named Vital said that she wants you to come down since you promised to teach her to use Ki. He shouted. Gohan came down in a blur. He appeared in a blur in front of Vital. Said girl was so surprised that she stumbled and almost fell on her butt when Gohan grabbed her waist and pulled her up. Gohan realized what he did and blushed inconspicuously. Vital was also blushing at it. Godin looked up confusedly, seeing Vital's face turn red. He turned towards Gohan and asked, Hey Ni Chan, can you teach me Masenko Ha? Gohan snapped out of his trance and looked at his little brother's face. Sure squirt, I'll teach it to you, but first, you have to get Naruto and Satsuki, all right? He asked. Godin nodded excited to see his Naruto ni and Nei chan Godin had made it a habit to call Satsuki, Nei chan because she was like a sister to Godin. Trunks had taken a similar habit and called Naruto and Gohan his brothers. Godin looked up and shouted out, flying Nimbus, come to me, he wasn't faster than Nimbus and he wanted to learn Masenko and maybe a Rasengan if Naruto ni showed him how. A yellow cloud came to Godin a few seconds later, stunning vital at seeing another Nimbus. Godin got on top of the golden cloud and flew towards the lake ten miles off to the west where he sensed Naruto and Satsuki. With Naruto and Satsuki prior to Godin's arrival, Naruto and Satsuki were laying at the grass-covered ground. Satsuki's head was on Naruto's chest. Naruto had his hand wrapped around his fiancée's waist. They were both snoring lightly as they slept. In their sleep, they felt Godin coming towards them at speeds they didn't know he could go at. They quickly dried themselves with key and got dressed in a full attire instead of the swimming trunks and bikini they were wearing right now. Just at that moment, Godin arrived on top of a Nimbus cloud. Naruto ni, Satsuki ne, ni chan wants you to come so you can teach Vital how to use Ki. Godin told the two. The two lovers nodded to their little brother's statement. Godin hopped on his brother's shoulders while the two teleported to a clearing where they sensed Gohan and Vital. The two appeared in front of a purple and red GI wearing Gohan and a regular dressed girl. Vital was surprised by the appearance and jumped backwards. Naruto and Satsuki watched as Gohan held out a hand to Vital who took it. Gohan accidentally pulled a bit hard and they ended up in an embrace. They backed a bit away from each other. All right V, I already explained to you what KI was, now all you have to do is find it and pull it out. To do this, I want you to meditate. This should make you less tense and sense your own energy. Gohan explained. Vital did as she was told and got into a meditative pose. She relaxed her muscles, but thoughts constantly came into her mind. Satsuki noticed the tensing of the muscles and told Vital, V, you need to relax more. Concentrate on something or someone that makes you happy. Imagine that and keep it there. Don't let your thoughts run astray. Vital imagined her mother and the times she spent with her as a young child. Vital unconsciously loosened her muscles. She went into a deep trance. When Vital opened her eyes, she appeared in a black void. Suddenly, a memory appeared. It was a memory that she didn't remember. Suddenly, the block on it disappeared and she finally was able to recall what had happened back then. At that time, she was six years old. Her mother had told her that she was very special that she had high reserves of something called Ki. Miguel had told her daughter that the reason for it was because she was the descendant of Harunimo, a guardian. At that time, she had no idea what that meant. Now though, 
Vital knew that she was descendant from a rather powerful person from her mother's side. This allows her to have large amounts of key stored within her. The black-haired girl had no idea what a guardian was though. After the memory disappeared, Vital was covered in a white, silver aura. When she reopened her eyes, she saw a huge ball of blue energy. It had a little paper at the bottom. Looking at the paper, she heard, destroy it to access your power. Doing as commanded, she put her hand on the paper. Symbols appeared all over the paper. It burst into black flames and the blue energy started to absorb inside of her. On the outside, the four semi-Saiyans saw blue aura surround Vital. Impossible, not even Krillin has this much ki, how could Vital, who has no training in ki summon this much? Questioned a wide-eyed Saiyan trio. The amount of ki that was felt was high over Krillin's. It reached twice as much as Krillin's. The aura slowly disappeared and only a bit of it remained, condensed into a sphere. Vital opened her eyes and looked down at the ball of ki with pride at having gotten it so fast. Then she fell on her back with exhaustion and looked at the sun, only to see that it had moved quite a bit, making her realize she took one hour. Gohan nodded to her and she stood up. All right Vital, all of us are going to teach you differently okay? Seeing her nod, he continued, I will teach you how to use key as well as a few techniques, how to sense key and telepathy to other key users. Naruto will teach you what he wants, same for Satsuki. She nodded once again. First, summon a little of Ki, he told her. Vital searched for it and dragged out a portion of it. It condensed into ball on her palm. Good, now make it repel itself of your palm and hit that tree, he told her. She did as she was told and fired. It went towards the tree and, it completely missed the target. It flew up and hit a boulder exploded into hundreds of pieces. One half hour later, Mount. Paozu. 1.30 p.m. Gohan had finally taught Vital to aim properly. She was now able to control her small key attacks from a distance. Her aiming was pretty good now. She would be able to hit 99 100s targets. After teaching her to aim, Gohan decided that he should show her a few other key attacks. He would teach her Super Key Blast, Masenko, Solar Flare, Key Shield, Water Walk, Break Cannon, and Kamehameha. Vital, it's time I teach you a few types of key techniques. Gohan told her. Vital smiled and hugged him. A few moments of blushing later, she let go. She was ecstatic to learn actual key attacks. The first I'll teach you is the Super Key Blast. This is a simple move, instead of creating a small key ball, you need to add more key. This should be very easy. Gohan explained. Vital gathered her key in her palm. She added more than normal though. About three times more to be precise. She blasted it at Gohan who knocked it aside. How were you able to defect it? Vital questioned. Easy. Just focus key inside your hand and defect. Vital nodded. Good job, V. You were able to do it on the first try. Now, the second attack will be Masenko. The attack is performed by placing both hands above the head with the palms facing the target and one hand in front of the other with the fingers going in opposite directions. When ready, you thrust your hands forward and call the name and fire. Gohan told her. Vital nodded and did the attack. After trying ten times, Vital was finally able to fire a Masenko Ha. Next is Solar Flare. To do this technique, you need to press your palm outwards while spread. Then, you need to flare your key out, but only use the light. This should make a much brighter white light appear. Two hours later, Gohan had taught Vital all the techniques he thought she needed and could handle. He would teach her more, but she couldn't handle them right now. Vital was ing as she finally learned all the techniques. As they sat down to let her recover her key, Vital asked, Gohan, have you ever thought about entering the World Martial Arts Tournaments? Gohan shook his head. He was never able to since he was training for the androids. Maybe I can join this year. I can invite all the other Z fighters. It should be or going to revive dad in a month so it could be a good way to celebrate his return. I haven't thought about it, but maybe. Dad's going to come back in a month so it would be great way to celebrate. What do you mean? Did your dad leave you for another woman? She asked with a disgusted face. Gohan realized how that sounded and quickly denied T. No 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 no, you see, our dad died seven years ago, when he did, 
something happened and he was held in the dead before he was let back. He explained. He wasn't sure why he told her that his dad was dead, but he felt as though he could trust her with the truth. Your father died, she shouted. You would if you just found out your friend's father was dead and he was coming back. Gohan rubbed his sensitive ears and replied, Yeah, we're going to revive him a month later though. Vital composed herself and asked, Who is we? We, as all of our friends and family that know about K.I. He answered her. She just nodded, unsatisfied, but not wanting to probe. All right, that's enough of a break. Now I will teach you how to sense Ki. This will help you track fights without sights. Think of it as a sixth sense that's always on. Gohan told her. Vital got up and ready. She felt almost all of her key return to her. All right Vital, I want you to try to feel key around you. Vital tried to sense things around her by closing her eyes. She was able to see small, like one grain of sand, sparks around her. As she expanded it, she felt a huge spark. It was as big as a house. Vital honed in on that key. Good job Vital, you were able to sense key in 30 minutes. Gohan told her once she opened her eyes. The girl was surprised at how long she took. Vital, now I want you to send your key at me. Don't do it physically though. Try to send it out to connect with mine, Vital did as told. When she tried to catch the huge spark's key, the key danced around hers. Vital kept trying and trying until 20 minutes later, she was able to get it. Hello Vital, the telepathy worked. Congratulations. Now you should go to Naruto so he can teach you. She heard Gohan's voice in her head. Vital nodded to him and surprisingly, gave him a hug and a kiss on the cheeks. Thank you Gohan, she said and flew off. Good job Vital, you were able to sense Ki in 30 minutes. Gohan told her once she opened her eyes. The girl was surprised at how long she took. Vital, now I want you to send your key at me. Don't do it physically though. Try to send it out to connect with mine, Vital did as told. When she tried to catch the huge spark's key, the key danced around hers. Vital kept trying and trying until 20 minutes later, she was able to get it. Hello Vital, the telepathy worked. Congratulations, now you should go to Naruto so he can teach you. She heard Gohan's voice in her head. Vital nodded to him and surprisingly, gave him a hug and a kiss on the cheeks. Thank you Gohan she said and flew off. One month later, a month has passed since the Saiyan trio had started training Vital. Over that time period, Vital got very strong. They made her go into the gravity room by Gohan sparring with Vegeta. Vital was able to get up to 50x gravity before Vegeta came back from the spar. Vegeta is a slim yet well-built man of a below-average stature. His hair is spiky and it firmly stands upwards, and has a prominent widow's peak. Like most Saiyans, he possesses black eyes and his hair is a shade of black. He wears a dark blue sleeveless jumpsuit with white gloves and boots. During that time, Vital met a few of the Z fighters. She had met Krillin, Vegeta, Yamcha, Goten, Trunks, Naruto, Satsuki, Gohan, and Bulma. I include Bulma because she will be the intelligence information gatherer. They didn't know how strong Vital was since Vital hid her key. May 26th was the date of Goku's 7th anniversary. Gohan had woken up extra early and woke up both Naruto and, when they teleported to Capsule Core, Satsuki. Gohan had taken the Dragon Radar from Bulma. When they got there, they saw that Goten was with Trunks. After getting the Dragon Ball tracking tech and inviting the youngest Saiyans, the Saiyan 5 Gohan, Satsuki, Naruto, Goten, and Trunks left towards the closest ball. The Saiyan 5 had gathered six of the seven Dragon Balls after one hour of searching. Gohan opened the radar and clicked the button on top. It showed six orange blinking balls and another one northwest of them. Follow me, the last one in northwest. Gohan told them telepathically. The others nodded to his command and followed him. After two minutes of flying, the finally came to a deserted plain near Knotted Village. When arriving at the location of the Dragon Ball, they both looked down and saw the four-star Dragon Ball along with a few dinosaur eggs. Slowly going down, they tried to pick up the Dragon Ball. Keyword. Tried. The parents came back and saw someone near their babies. They flew towards the invaders, but accidentally hit the ball out of the nest. 
Gravity pulled it towards the river. Gohan flew right in there, as well as Naruto and Satsuki, with their key cloaks to keep themselves dry. All three Saiyans looked for the Dragon Ball and found it floating down the water and about to be in a small hole. Focusing on the ball, Gohan used Ki to lift the ball up and out of the tiny chasm. Gohan got out and the other four flew off to a near place to summon Shenron. They finally got a place, but discovered that people lived there. When Satsuki looked down, she saw a girl about to get killed so she swept down and grabbed her before setting her on the ground. When the man looked back, his staff rolled out of his hands and into the foot of trunks. What do you think you're doing? She shouted at the man who was about to sacrifice her. Intruders, she shouted as he pointed at Satsuki. All the villagers looked at the five people in confusion. We're not intruders, my name is Satsuki. Now what the hell do you think you were doing, killing this girl? She said. Hi, I am Godin. Trunks, Gohan, Naruto. They all introduced themselves as they walked forward. We're sacrificing them so that the monster doesn't eat did you come from? Asked Meloja, as Trunks handed him his staff. From the sky, said Trunks in amusement. From the skies, what do you take us for, fools? Meloja shouted at them. Yeah, I do, all of them except Godin thought with a sweat drop. It's easily, like this. Godin laughed innocently while rising to the sky and coming back down. The villagers looked on in amazement. Godin's stomach gurgle and they look at him while said person laughs sheepishly. Ha 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 ha. He is interrupted by the man who starts saying random shit while fooling around, the girl Satsuki rescued back in place. A monster has come for blood, it demands a sacrifice. A man says as he comes from the back. A monster. What do ya mean old man? Godin asks excitedly, hoping it was edible. The man comes up to him and stares down at him while Godin looks upward, still excited. Okay, look, my name is Gohan. I mean you no harm. Squeezes Godin and Trunks, and the same goes for these the rest of us. We have no ill will for you or your people. Forgive our suspicion, we were not always this way. I am Zolidor, the village senior, and this is Meloja, the village idiot, and self-elected shaman. Zolidor introduces. They are crushed and must be cleansed of the evil conflicting their dark souls. Meloja said as he began circling them saying for gibberish as the Saiyans ignored the Baka. Seven years ago and the mountain god put a curse upon this village. The great crystal which has protected for all the ages has shattered. And prosperity gave way to misery as drought and famine covered the land, still we managed to survive then one day a terrible storm came down from mountains and with it a monstrous beast came and killed our livestock and attacked the village Meloja has advised an annual sacrifice to appease the mountain god and quell the beast savagery, this has become our way of life, and I'm afraid it get worse with each passing year, Salvador said as Gohan glared at Meloja. Superstition, you just love to hear yourself talk don't you? And you're not saving anything, Satsuki said as the man glared at her. Silence you stupid girl, Meloja laughed pointing his staff at her. Oh you want to talk stupid in that outfit mister? You're the walking definition, the teen said approaching the man with her hands on her hips. How dare you, Meloja yelled pointing the staff again as she grabbed it. His way may not be the best but right now it's the only thing that keeps the village together, Salvador said. Okay I've heard enough of this. Do not fear we shall dispose of the beast and free your village from its suffering, Gohan said. We will, Godin said. Yes Godin, we will, he said, looking at his younger brother. After the agreement, Gohan, Naruto, Satsuki, Godin and Trunks tried to feel any strong key around them. They couldn't find anything so they got another plan. They got a large pot filled with foods as Godin asked to eat some as Gohan told him no. But I'm starving. Can't I have a taste? Godin said. No you can't little bro, I promise that we can eat after we stop the monster, Gohan told him gently. But I haven't eaten anything since breakfast. Godin whined as they they flew up into the air. Forget it Godin, Gohan told him, a little stricter. But I'm hungry too, Trunks whined. Later, Satsuki told them. Godin, Trunks, if you don't stop. I will make Vegeta train both of you in the gravity room with no Super Saiyans. Naruto told them. Godin started to cry and sniffle. No please, wah wah wah, don't do that, Mr. Vegeta will kill us. He said as he started to loudly cry. 
All right, just be quiet and you will get food. Satsuki told her little brother, brother-in-law. While they were talking they didn't see the red dinosaur below. It let out a roar and they looked down to see it. So you're the monster that's been terrorizing the village. Well then now you have something to fear, Gohan said as he blasted and cut it with his key sword and key blast. After getting rid of the monster the village cooked it in celebration with Kento, Vital, Trunks and Godin as their honored guest. Tonight for the first time we will sleep in peace, let's us feast, Salvador said as Trunks and Godin stuffed their faces. Gohan noticed a yellow light flashing up in the mountains. What the hell is that? He thought before speaking again, well we got to go. He told the villagers. Oh wait, why don't you stay here for the day? The village elder asked them. They looked at each other and nodded, not wanting to seem impolite. The next day Naruto awoke early to a rumbling noise from outside as he saw Goten and Trunks snoring away as Naruto quickly ran outside and flew towards the lake where he could see a man in the mist floating above the water as several green kai blasts went flying in his direction as he dodged them and saw them create huge explosions in other directions. Naruto faced the man who just destroyed some of the land. The man in the mist then was seen as the Saiyan saw he had glowing gold hair wearing no shirt and wore gold jewelry on parts of his body as a gold sphere surrounded his body. There are helpless people down there. What the hell do you think you're doing? He yelled as the man didn't say a word before he came flying at him. Naruto dodged his punch as he smiled evilly at him. The man quickly flew towards him and tried to punch him, barely missing. Naruto transforms into a Super Saiyan, causing the ground to shake. The other Saiyans woke when they felt the ground shake and Gohan sensed a powerful enemy at the lake as Satsuki, her, and the kids flew towards there to see a man and Naruto fighting. Hey pick on somebody your own size. Trunks yelled as Goten floated next to him with the bag filled with dragon balls at his side as Gohan remembered who this was. That's Brawly, I thought he was dead. He thought, remembering his adventures at New Planet Vegeta. Brawly then laughed as he looked at Goten with an evil glare as he began to float up as strings of water spun around him. Kakarot, he growled as Gohan knew who he was talking about, but the others didn't. Huh Kakarot, what does that mean, if that a vegetable then I hate vegetables. Goten yelled as he charged at the man. The Saiyan backhanded his, nemesis, into the lake. All the Saiyans transformed into their super Saiyan form. The older ones went to the ascended version. They all rushed at the man as he kept screaming in rage, his KI rising as he did. At an unknown place, a man was looking at the screen with a huge, evil grin on his face. He saw the five Saiyans fighting against another one. The man quickly teleported to the place. Back to the fight, just as they were about to reach the legendary Super Saiyan, a man appeared out of nowhere. He is a muscular, white-haired, mulleted man with grayish-blue eyes. He wears a yellow vest adorning the Red Ribbon Army logo on his left side, as well as tiny gray suspenders worn underneath his vest, green trousers, black boots with rib tips, brown gloves, as well as a gray and yellow baseball cap with the Red Ribbon Army logo on its front. So this is Android 13 feet the oldest Saiyans thought, quickly connecting the dots. All were stunned except Brawly. The man in front of him was getting in his way of killing Kakarot. He needed to die. Before he could act, the man appeared behind Brawly and placed his hand on him. Instantly, Brawly was sucked into it as he disappeared. Android 13 started to laugh as he glowed brightly. After it faded, in his place was a man with dark blue skin, dark yellow eyes. He had orange spiky hair, just like Jugo. He had armor on top of his stomach as well as his shoulders. He had green trousers on with golden bracelets on his hands. Who are you? Trunks shouted at man, I am Android 13, Dr. Jero's greatest creation. The man shouted with pride. Sensing the power of the man, since he had Brawly in him, Gohan looked at the others and shouted, get out of here. He's too strong for you guys. The others didn't want to leave, but understood the android's power. I will kill you and everyone Goku loved, Android 13 said. Then I guess it'll have to be a fight, Gohan said getting into a fighting stance. But I warn you not to underestimate me. I'm not worried, Android 13 replied with a grin. Just as the words left the taller android's mouth Gohan charged forward trying to catch Android 13 off guard with a punch right to the face. 
Android 13 raised his arm and blocked the blow with relative ease and quickly brought a fist forward into Gohan's stomach doubling the Demi Saiyan over in pain. Android 13 followed the blow up with a quick back hand to the Demi Saiyan's face sending the boy flying back into a nearby cliff face. Gohan rose slowly to his feet and dusted himself off. He wasn't really hurt by the blows but he knew he needed to be more cautious now. I don't think I'm the one underestimating my opponent, Android 13 said with a laugh. What? Gohan replied. Did you think that's all I can do? That was just a slight warm-up. With that Gohan shot out of the cliff face with renewed speed and almost instantly closed the distance between himself and Android 13 and drove his fist hard into the other Saiyan's stomach. Android 13 spit a bit of blood out of his mouth as he was unprepared for the blow coming from the Demi Saiyan. Before he could even react, Gohan brought a knee up into Android 13's face and sent the warrior flying. Android 13 quickly righted himself and wiped some blood from his mouth. And this isn't even close to what I can do. Gohan said. Then how about we take it up a notch then? Android 13 said as he clenched his fists at his side and began to power up. Gohan stared in shock as Android 13's power began to skyrocket. Right before his eyes, Android 13's hair defied gravity and turned to a golden color as his eyes turned turquoise. His body mass nearly doubled as his muscles expanded completing the Saiyan's transformation. Android 13 grinned. You're no match for my super android form. It looks quite a bit like Super Saiyan to me, Gohan said, still staring in shock at how much the power increased. It was still smaller than his full power, but still. You still don't know what you're up against, Android 13 said with a grin. But I could use a good fight so I'll go easy on you. Gohan didn't bother to respond and instead charged at the other warrior and threw a punch at him. Android 13 raised his arm to easily block the blow but Gohan used instant transmission at the last minute to appear behind Android 13 and drove his elbow into the back of the giant warrior's neck. Android 13 stumbled forward a bit from the blow but was otherwise unaffected. A split second later, he brought his own elbow back into the stomach of an unprepared Gohan. The young Demi Saiyan stumbled from the pain of the blow but brushed it off rather quickly. He looked up just in time to see Android 13's fist heading for his face. Gohan raised his arm to block the blow. For a few seconds the warriors stood frozen in place pushing against each other in a contest of strength. Finally Android 13 proved to be the stronger warrior and began to push Gohan's arm back toward his face. Gohan decided right then that this was a useless struggle. The boy quickly phased out of sight and appeared above Android 13 with his hands cupped at his side. Ka, me, ha, me, ha, he shouted sending the beam of energy at the other Saiyan. Android 13 turned and gathered some green energy of his own in his hand as the Kamehameha rushed toward him. Blaster shell, he shouted sending his own blast at Gohan's. The two blasts collided and exploded with tremendous force sending both warriors flying in separate directions as well as decimating the surrounding landscape. Gohan got to his feet and assessed his condition. His clothes were beginning to get tattered and he had several cuts and bruises but nothing too serious. Gohan shot off with a golden aura to find his opponent. It didn't take long for the two to meet once again. The two immediately began to exchange blows faster and faster neither one being able to block them all or cause a great deal of damage to the other. Finally after a few minutes of that the two separated once again. Android 13 decided that he needed to be serious and started to raise his power to the max, surpassing Gohan. The others, who weren't very far away, raced back to the fight after seeing that the man had surpassed Gohan. When they arrived they were surprised to see the man had transformed again. Gohan saw them and telepathically told them to attack. They did as were told and shot off to the android, even with them attacking at all his sides. The android was able to dodge them and hit each of them, sending them back. He went towards Naruto and started to punch him everywhere. After battering him all around, he blasted him through the stomach. Naruto threw up blood and crashed right into the lake. Satsuki saw what he did and screamed in rage. That bastard had just hurt the man she loved. The reincarnated girl flew at him one again with her ki rising. Gohan was flying towards his brother, a senzu bean in his hand. Quickly reaching him, he force-fed the bean and Naruto recovered. When he opened his eyes and looked up to see his lover being battered by the bastard. Taking a senzu bean, 
he kicked the off-guard android and fed it to Satsuki, who recovered from her wounds. Trunks and Godin also got to where Gohan was and he started talking. All right guys, we have one shot, we need to put everything into our next attack. Power your strongest attack and blow it at him. The others nodded and got ready. Naruto, Satsuki, Godin, and Gohan were in the Kamehameha position. Trunks was in his final flash position. When the android came back, they started to charge their beams. Ka, me, ha, me, ha, screamed Gohan. Ka, me, ha, me, ha, yelled Naruto. Ka, me, ha, me, ha, yelled Godin. Ka, me, ha, me, ha, screamed Satsuki. Final, flash, Trunks screamed. The beams connected to form a huge purple and blue beam that went straight for the android. The android got arrogant and thought that he could handle it. At the last second, he charged a beam cannon and threw it forward after sensing its power. The yellow beam and blue purple beams collided with each other. The android's attack lost and the beams hit him straight on, destroying him. After the attack, they all fell down, except trunks, from exhaustion. The boy took out a senzu bean from Gohan's pocket and split it into five pieces. Feeding himself, he stopped in and gave one to each of the other Saiyans. Later at Capsule Core, all of the Z fighters and friends' families had gathered at Capsule Core. Goku, Bulma, Oolong, Yamcha, Puar, Krillin, Master Roshi, Piccolo, Tian Shinhan, Shaosu, Gohan, Vegeta, Trunks, Goten, Android 18, Chi Chi, Naruto, Satsuki, Den, Popo, Ox King, Mrs. Briefs, Dr. Briefs, and Vital were all there. They had all gathered here because today was the day that their friend, husband, dad, fellow Saiyan, rival got revived. When the youngest five Saiyans had come back with the Dragon Balls, they had all been surprised. They then got excited to finally revive Goku. Gohan went in front of the group and set the Dragon Balls down. He then yelled, Shenron, Come forth from your slumber and grant me my wish. They started glowing. Pulsing with light a heartbeat later, darkening the sky, the starry horizon fading to an eerie, pitch black, golden lightning streaked across the sky. A streak of light jolted up from the balls before winding and spiraling its way into the sky above. Vital watched it take shape, assume flesh and form. Imagine her horror when she saw the sheer size of the creature, in all its green scaled glory. Baleful red eyes regarded the blue-eyed woman as though she were but an insect, a mere drop in the ocean of life. You, who has awakened me from my slumber, ask a wish so I may go back to sleep. The giant dragon boomed throughout the sky. I wish to bring back Son Goku back from the other world. Gohan shouted. Ruby eyes glowed and a light appeared behind him. When it disappeared, Goku appeared. He has spiky black hair, he has four spikes on the right and three on the left side, with some hair strands between them. He is wearing his trademark orange G.I. over a dark blue short-sleeved undershirt. This G.I. has featured King Kai's own kanji on its back, as well as Roshi's and Goku's kanji on the front left side, around the stomach area. He also wears dark blue wristbands, along with dark blue boots with a yellow border that are outfitted with red laces. He wore a blue sash. Your wish has been granted. I sense you have no more wishes. I shall return to my slumber. You may reawaken me in four months. The dragon told them. Goku looks around and saw his friends and family running towards him. He smiled widely and said, Hey everyone oof. He was interrupted by his wife jumping on him. He smiled softly and spun her around. The others also came and started to talk to him. Naruto, Satsuki, Piccolo, and Vegeta were the only ones who didn't. Goku saw someone who looked like him behind Chi Chi and recognized him as his son. Hey Chi Chi, I think there's a mini me behind you. Goten peeked out shyly at his father and asked, Are you my daddy? The full blooded Saiyan smiled gently and said, Yes, I am. My name is Goku, who are you? I'm Goten, the hybrid said excitedly. He ran into his father where Goku faked falling. Whoa, you're pretty strong, aren't you, big guy? He asked while on the ground. Yeah, Goten excitedly replied. After everything had calmed down Gohan asked his father, Hey dad, do you want to go to the World Martial Arts Tournament? Goku looked excited at the news and said, Yeah, 
why don't we all participate? He said to the Z fighter, but some rejected the offer. Sorry Goku, but I can't keep up with you guys. I think I'll just stand by this time. Yamcha told him. Tian and Shaosu replied the same thing. Krillin, Gohan, Piccolo, 18, Satsuki, Vegeta, Naruto, Goten, Trunks, Vital all said yes. After everything had calmed down Gohan asked his father, Hey dad, do you want to go to the World Martial Arts Tournament? Goku looked excited at the news and said, Yeah, why don't we all participate? He said to the Z fighter, but some rejected the offer. Sorry Goku, but I can't keep up with you guys. I think I'll just stand by this time. Yamcha told him. Tian and Shaosu replied the same thing. Krillin, Gohan, Piccolo, 18, Satsuki, Vegeta, Naruto, Goten, Trunks, Vital all said yes. One month later, Goku had spent a lot of time with his family. He had thought over some things after dying and realized how horrible of a father and husband he was. He had barely spent any time with Gohan and Chi Chi after Gohan turned four. He was always training or had an adventure to even spend time with them. When he found out he had another son, he was devastated since his son wouldn't have a father much. He barely spent a year with Naruto since he had to train for the androids. He couldn't raise Goten for seven years. Sure he kept in contact with telepathy, but it wasn't the same since he couldn't do it with Goten. After thinking about it all, he resolved himself to spend as much time as he can with his family. He would still train, but not for as much or not as long. Instead of spending all that time in outer space, he could have done an instant transmission to home instead of taking so damn long. He had pretty much three seconds before cell exploded, why not teleport to a person then teleport back, revive the damage and be done with. Hell, he had more than that, don't give explanation, take away cell, come back instantly, then use the dragon ball to fix damage, then explain everything. This self bash is so that no one gets hurt physically or emotionally later. Goku did still train a lot, but he spent time with his family. Over this time period, Goku had told Gohan, Naruto, and Satsuki that he had discovered a new level of the Saiyan transformation. When they had learned of this, Gohan had suggested that the four of them could use the room of spirit and time. When Goku had replied that they may need it for future threats, Gohan had said, let's just use the 45 days we didn't when we left early. Goku couldn't argue with that logic and agreed. They had spent all their time in their eating, sleeping, or training to do the Super Saiyan 3 transformation. They tried the same training for Super Saiyan 3. They had never been able to master it, but they could do it longer than before and without wasting energy. The transformation took a lot of key so it also increased their reserves. After that month had passed, everyone was getting ready to go to the World Martial Arts Tournament. All of them had met up at Capsule Core, to teleport there. Vital wasn't able to get there since she had to go with her father in his huge ass plane. After teleporting and scaring normal people there, they all headed towards registrations. The man at the registration desk looked up and asked, Name, in a bored tone. Goku, he looked up and saw the previous champion of the tournament. Gohan, Vegeta, Vital, he looked and saw the world champion's daughter. Goten and Trunks, when he looked up and saw him, he said. One for the junior tournament. No way man, mom and auntie Chi Chi signed this registration form so we could be in the adult section, Trunks told him, showing the document. The man shook his head, thinking how irresponsible their parents were. Krillin, 18, Piccolo, Naruto, Satsuki. After all of the people had registered for the tournament, they all headed for the inside. All of the boys and girls headed inside their lockers to change into their fighting clothes. It's too bad for the others that were here. We're the only ones who can give each other a fight. Krillin commented. Outside the room, two officials were dotting over Piccolo. Are you alright sir? You're looking a little green. Piccolo blushed a bit and frantically screamed. Leave me alone. I've always looked like this. The two ran away. Sorry to keep you waiting. Krillin yelled as he and the other boys headed towards the girls. They all headed towards the ring. When they arrived, they saw a bunch of people were practicing. A blonde man looked at them in surprise and ran over to them. He has yellow-haired combed back with black sunglasses on him. 
He has a small growing mustache. He wears a black and white suit with a red tie. He has a microphone in his hand, the head was green. Hey it's you, the tournament announcer said coming up to Goku. I'm so glad to see you here. After you all left the last tournament it was extremely boring. Hey just between you and me, you beat Cell didn't you? No, Goku replied, I died fighting Cell, I was revived a month ago. I can't believe Hercule beat Cell. It just can't be possible. He didn't, Gohan said. I did, just don't tell anyone. Okay, one of the tournament monks said. We have some 200 contestants entering the tournament. There are only 16 slots available. Since Hercule is the reigning champion he is automatically in. That leaves 15 slots if you do the math. 16 minus 1, Goku started slightly puzzled. Anyway, the attendant continued bringing Goku out of his math practice. We will have each of you test your strength on a punching machine. The 15 highest scores will fight in the tournament. The world champion will start us off and give you all a number to shoot for. Hercule walked up to the machine and pulled back and hit it with all his might. 139, the attendant said. Hopefully one of you get over a hundred so it'll be interesting, Hercule said. Goku, the official said. Goku walked up to the machine and tapped it trying to hit it as lightly as possible. 278, the attendant said. Hercule will definitely have some competition this year. Mrs. 18, the official said reading off his sheet. 18 walked up to the machine and tapped it. 788, he said in disbelief. This machine must be broken. Please try again. 18 hit the machine again this time holding back a little more. 254, the attendant said. Krillin, the monk said once again. Krillin went up to the punching machine and holding back as much as he could, he tapped it. The numbers started to mix until 250 was shown. 250, he said. Godin, a little kid came up to the machine and all the adults started to make fun of him. He punched the machine weakly like his knee Chan said and 196 dinged. 200, the man said in disbelief as everyone looked at the kid in amazement. This kid just beat the champ. He must have been holding back, they all thought. Trunks, a lavender haired kid came forwards, but no one laughed at him, having learned their lessons. The 8 year old tapped it to get a score of 187. 187, the officials said, Satsuki. One of the best looking women came forwards and also tapped it, giving her 370. 370, the man sad once again. One by one the contestants hit the machine with the Z fighters all holding back and still scoring well in the 200s. Finally Vegeta got up to the machine, having been sent to the end of the line for bad behavior. The prince pulled his fist back and tapped the machine sending it flying into the wall broken. That's a qualification, the official said. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, the announcer said. All competitors will come up and get a number. The numbers will decide the person your fighter. When I call your name, come forward. Vital, Vital came forth like asked and drew her number. She showed the number to the announcer. All right, you'll be the first person to fight. He told the short-haired Vital, who nodded back. 18 inches the blonde came forth and grabbed number 16, ending up last. Shin, the purple-skinned man went to the box with a smirk and narrowed eyes. He pulled out his number and showed it, 3. Gohan, the demi Saiyan, went up to the blonde man and took out 11. He showed the man with a grin, excited to fight someone strong. Satsuki, the reincarnated girl went up to receive the number that was called 7. Naruto, the tailed boy left for the front and took his number, 9. Krillin, the monk got up front and received his number showing two, meaning he would fight vital. Goku, the previous champion went up and picked the number 13. Kabito, the tall man got up and picked 12. Yamu, he picked 8. Spopovich, he got 10. Godin, the seven-year-old got 5. Trunks, the lavender-haired kid went towards the box and grabbed 6, meaning he would fight his best friend. Vegeta, the almighty Saiyan prince of seven people went forth to get the number 14. He smirked, he would fight his rival and the strongest would finally be declared. Mr. Satan, due to the savior not being there, the announcer did it for him and got 15. Piccolo, the tall green man went up, got three. Vital versus Krillin. 
Shin vs. Piccolo, Goten vs. Trunks, Satsuki vs. Yamu, Naruto vs. Spopovich, Gohan vs. Kabito, Goku vs. Vegeta, Satan vs. A Team. The rules are the same as ever. If you are thrown out of the ring, knocked out, or give up, you lose. The blonde man announced to the whole audience. Ha ha ha, seems like you're going to lose Kakarot. Vegeta exclaimed with a smirk. You wished Vegeta, Goku said with a cheerful smile. Vegeta gained a vein and started to argue with Goku. Satsuki and Naruto were having their own time together, talking about random shit and enjoying each other's company. Piccolo tried to study Shin. Shin is short, purple skinned with a white mohawk, and dressed in a posh Kai outfit. His assistant Kabito is a tall, red-skinned being. He possesses white, long hair and a broad face. He wears the attire similar that of Shin, who was apparently his master. Naruto and Satsuki both studied their opponents. Spopovich loses his hair, and becomes even more muscular than before, with his muscle mass becoming so large that large veins have appeared all over his body, bulging from his skin. Yamu is also very pale in nature. He is not nearly as big as his partner, but his muscle mass is still incredibly high. All right let's have Krillin and Vital up to the ring for the first match, the announcer said. Krillin and Vital stepped up to the ring. They both got into their battle stances, that being the Kame style. Start, the announcer, well announced. Doing the monk banked a mallet into a giant bell, starting the fight. The black-haired fighters flew towards each other at speeds faster than lightning and started to punch, kick, elbow, and knee the other. Krillin got a few hits, but Vital got in more. Too bad for her that Krillin had more endurance. Both broke off and started to charge at each other once again. Krillin threw a punch at her gut, but she jumped over him and tried to sweep his legs. Krillin jumped and twisted in midair, kicking Vital in the face, sending her flying. The girl quickly recovered and decided to use a trick Satsuki taught her before. She focused her energy into her hands, forming a blade of ki. Swiping it forward and releasing ki, a wave flew towards Krillin. Krillin, not wanting to pointlessly waste energy, just ducked under it. Vital merely smirked. That was a test run to see if it would work. Vital lifted her ki covered hand into the air and brought it down. The air blade went towards Krillin again and he jumped to the side, only to have to jump away again. He looked up and saw a huge amount of purple blades come to him, only separated from each other by a few inches. Krillin, knowing he couldn't jump or fly away since Vital had a few afterimages surrounding him. The monk couldn't tell which teen was the right one since the fighter had hidden her key to the same levels as the illusions. He didn't know which one it was and he couldn't go anywhere since Vital might attack him. Krillin headed right towards the blades and used his flexibility and acrobatics as well as size to go through the purple waves. He landed on feet after his next trick and got sent flying back with a kick to the back of the head. He landed near the edge of the ring and rubbed his head. How did you do that? He asked. Vital, knowing he was an ally, explained, I made three afterimages and flew up after hiding all of my key. I waited to see where you would go so I could go there and hit you out the ring. Vital smirked at her brilliant plan. Krillin recovered from the hit, patting his back for the stalling, and charged, just like Vital. They started to fight again, this time without tricks using key or afterimages or the likes. They both broke off and closed in on one another. Vital threw a fist forward which Krillin ducked kicked her hand away with a handstand and backflipped over her, kicking her in the head. Vital got knocked down, but she quickly recovered and moved away from the experienced fighter. The woman tried to think of a way to get Krillin and finally got an idea. She flew off the ground and created a bunch of blue blasts. Keeping her key at the same level as the blasts, she went forward with the blasts. Krillin dodged all the blasts and almost all hit the ring. That created a lot of dust, allowing Vital to rush at his back. Krillin sensed her and was about to dodge her, but she placed her hand on his back and used force palm. The haired man flew off but was able to stop in time. He rushed at Vital who also came at him. Each fighter started to punch, kick, elbow, and knee the other. Both slowly started to lift themselves higher and higher until they couldn't be seen by the untrained eye. Krillin broke off from attack and started to fire key blasts at her. They came towards her, but she decided to trick Krillin. Using her speed, 
she used the afterimage technique to appear behind him. Krillin looked in confusion as the blasts exploded, but nothing was there. He then had a hand go right through his head. The Krillin there slowly fizzed out of reality as a fist to the back made Vital fall to the ground. How did you do that? She asked the older fighter. He smirked and said, I fought afterimage users before and I know the technique, I just used it to fool you. Getting angry for being fooled so easily, Vital started to scream as her power started to rise. The confidence in Krillin decided to slip away. Wow, she's even stronger than Krillin. A surprised Goku said as he witnessed the fight. Gohan, Naruto, and Satsuki wore proud smirks on their face as Vital powered up, but Gohan had a thought. She is stronger, much stronger, but can she beat experience, techniques, and the control Krillin has? He questioned himself. He was rooting on her to win ever since he had developed feelings for her. Naruto and Satsuki were both frowning. They hated how these fights were just punches and kicks and dodges and blocks and key. They wanted someone to use pure taijutsu with key in there. Miguel's daughter finally stopped powering up while Krillin looked at her in a new light. This girl had surpassed his power with so little training. Krillin knew that he would lose, so he decided to make sure that she worked. Her hard work would now be tested. Krillin started to yell as a silver aura surrounded him. His key started to raise, but Vitals was still higher. Once he had fully powered up, they both rushed at each other once again. Vital threw a punch at Krillin, who spun around to dodge and kick her. The Satan saw the kick coming so she grabbed it and threw him to the edge of the ring. Vital disappeared and tried to knee him into the ring, only to phase through him and be kicked. She blocked the kick and threw her fist forward in an attempt to hit his face. Krillin dodged and flew up to the sky. He started to gather key in his hands and throw them at Vital. Vital dodged the attacks by jumping and backflipping away. She landed on her feet and blasted to him and kneed him in the stomach with incredible speed. The monk spit out saliva. The black-haired girl went above him and heel kicked him. Just as he was about to crash into the ring, he was able to keep afloat. This didn't stop him from being kicked to the side. Just as he was above the floor, he disappeared behind Vital to kick her there as well. She was now floating above the ring. Krillin kicked her down, but was confused when he appeared there instead. Krillin looked above him to see Vital with an afterimage above her. They both left for the competitor's place with smiles. It was a good fight and learning experience for both of them. When they got there, they saw all of their friends also had smiles. The winner of this epic fight is Vital. The announcer told everyone. Great fight guys. Congrats. Vital. Nice job. Were some of the comments from them. As they were talking, the announcer disrupted them by saying. Shin and Piccolo please come here. The oddly colored men headed towards the ring. As he walked into the arena, Piccolo was pulled aside by the announcer. Um, try to leave the arena intact this time. Okay, Piccolo replied. Piccolo walked onto the ring and stared at Shin. His energy, it feels familiar. Who is he? As he keeps feeling his energy, he started to remember could he really be. Hey what's wrong? The crowd was starting to get agitated. The announcer decided to speak up. You're both free to start fighting now. Piccolo shook his head before turning to the announcer. I'm sorry, I can't. All the Z fighters were stunned. Gohan was the most surprised. Piccolo, I've always known you to be strong and determined. What happened? Is this guy really that strong? He thought. The winner by forfeit is Shin. The announcer announced. Hey Piccolo, why did you quit? Krillin asked him. I have my reasons. The Namekian told him, Ha, huh, the green bean was probably scared or something. Vegeta taunted with a smirk. Shut your mouth Vegeta, you don't even know who that is. He told Vegeta, then left to ask Shin something without giving the others a word. I would like to know why you refused to fight me. I comma I thought you were the Grand Kai. Shin shook his head, I am not the Grand Kai. Kabito came up behind Piccolo. I'll tell you who he is. He's the Supreme Kai. Piccolo's eyes widened and his mouth gaped. What is he doing here? Why would he come here? Shin read Piccolo's mind and spoke to him mentally. You will find out soon. For now, please don't tell anyone who I am. Shin telepathically spoke. As you wish Supreme Kai. Piccolo told him telepathically. After Shin and Kabito left Goku walked up to Piccolo. What was that all about? 
Did that guy give you trouble? No Goku, it's fine, Piccolo replied to his friend. Okay then, the Saiyan shrugged, next two to fight are the young Goten and Trunks. These two may be young, but they hold incredible power. The announcer told the crowd. Go Goten, Chi Chi yelled from the stands. Bulma looked at her annoyed and yelled, Go on Trunks, show him what you can do. The two smiled at their mothers and faced each other. This is it, finally it's our turn, Goten said cheerfully. Yep, good luck Goten, Trunks told his best friend. You too Trunks, replied the Demi Saiyan, both of the Saiyans got into their fighting style. Goten was in the style that his brothers had taught him. A combination of Demon, Kane, Kami, and Saiyan style. He had not mastered the dragon style, as they called it. His Naruto ni also taught him a different style he called Taijutsu, Ultimate Whirlpool. It consisted of using pure hand to hand with key powered punches and kicks, but no blasts or anything alike. He still was bad at it so he couldn't use it. The Ultimate Whirlpool had always fit all of them. They were trying to mix it between the dragon style, but could not. The ultimate whirlpool also was way too good to use on friends so they hadn't had much practice. Trunks got into the Saiyan style that his dad had taught him. The attack was very offensive and consisted of hitting your opponent with speed and strength. Satsuki hadn't taught him very much since she spent most of her time with Naruto or training. She still helped him out a lot, more than their father. She taught him control and to always train in base form. She and Naruto had discovered that the base got stronger faster than using Super Saiyan form. This way, their training power gained was the same in Super Saiyan form, but cut in 1 50th in base. This also worked the other way. If you got stronger in base form, that would be 50 over 1 in Super Saiyan form. Satsuki Ni had also taught him a taijutsu style called Interceptor Fist. He had to use his eyes and sense key to predict the opponent's attacks and use it against them. He had tried to master it, but she and Naruto ni were always spending time. He still didn't understand why though. Trunks shot off towards his best friend. He tried to punch him in the gut, but he ducked and kicked at his gut. The brief caught the kick and slammed him to the ground. Goten hit the ring, but recovered extremely quickly and backflipped away from Trunks. Landing in the crouch, he threw himself at Trunks. Using an air kick to kick Trunks in the face. Trunks saw this coming and once he got close, he spun and ducked right under him to kick him. Too bad for him that Goten phased out and he got kicked in the back. He was sent flying to the other side. Both of them looked at each other with excited grins on their face. They once again flew at each other, Trunks throwing a punch at Goten. The hand went through him as all the audience was frozen. That was until Trunks was sent face first to the ground, a Goten with his elbow out behind him. Trunks got up and jumped into the sky, sending golden key blasts towards Goten. Goten just started to kick and punch them back. The two started to hit the balls back and forth until Goten came up with an idea. He kicked all the blasts back, but put his palm forward. Right when Trunks was about to hit them, he forced them to explode. Trunks instinctively protected himself with a key shield. Goten appeared behind Trunks and kicked him in the back. Trunks, unprepared for the action, was sent to the ground. Goten was about to ready a Masenko but thought, no, let's have more fun, referring to fighting as a fun thing to do, which to him it was. 1. Point 2. The announcer commented, but quickly stopped after seeing Trunks blast off towards Goten. Goten saw this and also blasted to him. They both pulled their arms back and punched, connecting their little fists. They threw a kick, but the other countered. This kept going on for several minutes. One did an attack and the other did the same. Finally having enough, Trunks tricked Goten by going for a punch. Just as they were about to meet, Trunks phased out. Goten looked around confused, but suddenly felt pain in his stomach. Looking down, he saw Trunks' elbow in his guts. Goten spit out saliva and fell to the ground. Before he could touch it, he started to rise once again. He held his hands back and into the position of the turtle devastation. Letting the key gather in his palm, he thrust his hands forward, a blue beam coming out. Trunks dived to the side and started to taunt Goten. Ah common Goten, you have to aim better. All he got in return was a smirk. He felt something hit his back and he fell to the ground. 1, point 2, point 3, point 4, 
8.5. The announcer started to count before Trunks came out. All right Godin, now you've made me angry. Trying to show off, he let out a yell as Key surrounded him. He turned into a Super Saiyan in a flash of gold. In the fighter's waiting area, Vegeta face palmed at his son's stupid antic. He had just wasted a bit of Key, allowing Kakabrath 3 to have more than him when he transformed. He should have taught him better. From now on, his own brat would get a hell of a training regime. Maybe let Kakabrat 1 teach him, he was apparently a good teacher, after all look at Trunks' future self and his princess now. Both had surpassed him at one time. Right now, his princess was stronger than him. Goten smiled and also quickly transformed into the legendary form of the Saiyan race. Gohan had him maintain this form so that he didn't waste a lot of energy in this form. The two both started their key blast. Trunks thrust his palms forward and a golden key blasted forth from his palm. Satsuki had taught him and Goten to never shout out their attacks, since it could let them counter you or find you. Goten also blasted forth a blue beam from his palms. Naruto had taught him the same when he was younger. Only whisper your attacks if need be, but never shout it. The two key beams collided and key started to go outward bot still contained. After a bit, they weren't able to last much longer, so they let the beam go, knowing someone would deflect it. Sure enough, Goku appeared before the beam and destroyed it. The now blondes flew at one another. They both punched the other's cheeks. They broke off and on multiple times. This time, Goten decided to finish this so he could save energy for later. Hum, how to knock Trunks out of the ring. Goten grinned to himself as he charged at his blue-eyed friend. Using an afterimage, he phased behind his friend. Trunks thought that the afterimage was him, so now was the time to strike. Putting his palm at Trunks' back, he whispered, Force palm. Using key to propel Trunks to the ground, Goten appeared at his side and used both his feet to kick the blonde to the higher part of the grassy floor. Appearing over Trunks, Goten delivered a heel kick to Trunks' stomach, causing him to land outside the ring. Goten and Trunks both got out of their transformation and walked off the ring. And the winner by ring out is Goten. Let's hand it to the two young warriors. The blonde man announced as the crowd went wild with cheers, especially Chi Chi. Will Satsuki and Yamu please report to the arena? The announcer said, Yamu and Satsuki went over to the field. I don't want to waste energy, so I'll finish this weakling fast. Was the thought going through Satsuki. When they made it onto the ring, the announcer said, start. Before Yamu could blink, Satsuki was in front of him and she kicked him into the air. Phasing behind him and grabbing onto his shirt, the Uchiha spun to kick Yamu's stomach. Sakura blocked it, but was unprepared for the backhand to his chest. Using the memento to get higher than the gray-skinned man, Satsuki spun and did a heel drop on his stomach, releasing some key to knock him out of conscious in the ring. The winner is Satsuki, Naruto and Spopovich, report to the ring. The blonde man told them over the speaker before Satsuki got back. When she heard that, she decided to wait until he was finished. Naruto and Spopovich went onto the ring. Start. Naruto, not wanting to waste time or energy, phased behind him and kicked him towards the edge of the ring. He then punched him off the ring, but Yamu floated. Naruto's eye twitched and he teleported behind the ash-skinned being and chopped his neck, knocking him out. Winner Naruto. The blonde man announced Naruto's inevitably victory. When he and Satsuki got back, both of them were questioned and the two answered the same way, I don't want to waste time with weaklings. Vegeta was proud of his princess. The crowd was cheering wildly due to the matches so far. Sure the last two wasn't long, but it was still exciting. These fighters were extremely strong, the people saw that. The announcer decided to call the next two fighters for the tournament. He was excited for this next fight, actually, he was excited by all the fights so far. The previous tournament was suckish at best and a nightmare at worst, a mockery of the tournament that decides the strongest under the heavens. Once Hercule Satan had become the champion, he had ruined the tournament, making people across the world believe that only strength mattered. The previous preliminaries were taken out so a punching machine was used. Hercule had made it so that people hated Key and destroyed the thoughts of training in everything but strength. The job of an announcer is not an easy one. 
But this job has been particularly demanding since the final good strongest under the heavens martial arts tournament. He had faked his excitement as Hercule Satan threw his opponent out of the ring and thus became the champion of the tournament. Yes, the state of martial arts these days were pretty abysmal. When he saw the old fighters from the previous tournaments and their friends and family, he had truly been excited for this once again. He had been shocked that Vital, Hercules' own daughter, used Ki when before, she was completely against this. With this excitement still burning, he called out the next fighters. Sun Gohan and Kabito, please report to the ring for your fight. He shouted through the microphone. The two mentioned warriors were both in the waiting area. When Kabito was called, Shin looked at his subordinate and cryptically said, you know what to do. The being nodded his head and headed out to the ring. Next is finally Gohan, right? Asked Chi Chi from the stands, right next to her best friend Bulma. His opponent is a guy named Kabito or something, the blue-haired genius replied. Doesn't matter if he is Kabito or Shibito, my Gohan will definitely win. She smirked with full confidence in her family. That's true, Gohan will win easily, the blue-eyed woman spoke while eating. Chi Chi stood up and shouted, Gohan, hang in there. While Bulma spit out her food, the announcer came up to the ring and started to speak, continuing on, we now hold the fourth match. The blonde spoke as the crowd cheered. Now contestants, please enter the ring. He shouted as both people went forward. With that, let's begin the fourth match. The mustache man spoke in the mic. The two started to size each other up until finally, Kabito spoke, turn yourself into this Super Saiyan business. I want to test you, to see if you will be able to help us when the situation arrive. The man spoke with his stern and serious gaze at Gohan. The teen Saiyan narrowed his eyes at the man, how does he know about the Super Saiyans? Wait what business? He makes it sound like something bad is going to happen. How do you know about the Super Saiyan transformation? The raven-haired teen asked him, his eyes still narrowed. You will know the answer to that that in any case shortly. First, I must see the abilities of a Super Saiyan, Kabito replied with his raspy voice. Back at the waiting room. So it begins. Shin spoke back at the waiting arena, a little behind the Z fighters. What are they talking about? Krillin asked out loud, not hearing the fighters' conversation. He asked for Gohan to be a Super Saiyan. Goku replied to his best friend's question, hearing them with his sensitive ears. Shin stepped forward, a look of grim determination on his face. He addressed Goku and his friend's family, no matter what happens from this point forward, you must not assist Gohan. That brought outbursts from all the gathered fighters, especially Goku, what are you talking about? What's going to happen? Gohan will soon undergo his Super Saiyan transformation. I am certain that once he does Jugger and Spopovich will attack him. Shin closed his eyes, preparing himself for the task he must do, you must all not do anything to assist him. They do not want his life, only his energy. Naruto felt like laughing, I'm sorry, but my brother can take care of himself. He doesn't need our help. Satsuki laughed alongside her lover, agreeing with him just like all the others did. That fact was what pained Shin, I know. Ha! Huh? Vegeta couldn't stand this, I don't need to be told what to do by some purple midget. Vegeta, show some respect, you are talking to the Supreme Kai, Piccolo exclaimed. Shock and awe spread through the Z fighters. Only those who had never had dealings with other world were left guessing at what had been said. Vital felt her panic grow from what Shin had said. She didn't understand everything that had been said. Kai, Super Saiyan, telling everyone not to help her boyfriend. That brought a cold fear out in her. What was going to happen to him? Goten and Trunks had absolutely no idea what was going on, just that Gohan might get hurt. They loudly protested against this. The ring, you are absolutely out of your mind. I'm not going to transform out in public. Kabito held his position, please, Gohan. It will help more than you think. You must transform. Show me your Super Saiyan power. Gohan didn't know how his opponent knew about that ability. What the hell am I supposed to do? I mean, if I had to transform to beat him then I would, but he just wants to see it. Does he think he would even have a chance if I powered up to my maximum in that form? Gohan. Gohan turned his head to see Piccolo standing next to Vital. He was nodding his head, which settled it. 
Gohan really didn't want to go through with this especially with Vital there, damn it. Well, I hope you're ready for this. It's not like you would stand much of a chance once I've powered up. Kabito scanned the area, looking for two individuals. This had to be done, show me. Gohan hunched down, gathering himself for the transformation, you want to see a Super Saiyan. Fine, but that's all you're going to see. Gohan gathered his power. He knew how to transform in a way that his full strength would immediately be brought out or at least for whichever level he changed to. His aura surrounded him and started to spiral around him. The energy buildup began to move the air in the stadium. Gohan gritted his teeth as he readied himself. His reached down. He brought out the transformation. Vital watched in awe as Gohan did something she had never expected. His hoarse scream echoed throughout the stadium. His hair flashed, tiles from the ring floor flew into the air, and a bright aura of golden energy erupted from him. Gohan's black visor flew away as his hair stuck out. Vital blinked to make sure wasn't seeing things. Sure Gohan had revealed to her that he was the golden fighter, but not where it came from nor had she ever watched the transformation. When Gohan gets back, he will explain everything to me. Vital silently growled out, even if the non-humans there still heard. There was one fighter amongst the tournament partisans that also was not present. Hercule hid behind a thin wall, feeling his fame and fortune slipping away, oh no. It's them. They're the guys from the Cell Games. Oh no, what am I going to do? I can't beat them. Yamu and Spopovich had woken a minute ago. They had recovered extremely fast due to their master Babidi. When the boy started to transform, Spopovich took out the device and scanned the now blonde's power. Hey, look at this. Spopovich shouted to his partner. Terrific energy, it's him. Yamu replied back, indicating on why they were here. The two flew towards him with the device in their hands. Gohan grinned at the look of horror written on Kabito's face, a bit more than you expected. Kabito hid whatever emotion had come out. I cannot believe his strength. How does a mere mortal possess such incredible power? This will be more than enough bait for those two to come out. Gohan grew tired of waiting, just what the hell are you doing? I transformed, did exactly as you asked. I'm probably going to be kicked out of school for this, so the least you could do is make some attempt at attacking me, Gohan felt his entire body constrict. His arms and legs were locked together by some invisible force. Then he felt the oncoming energy. The Saiyan was easily able to tell who they were, sensing their energy when the two had fought his brother and sister-in-law. He tried to move, but the force made him unable to move. The two gray-skinned weaklings came towards him and stabbed him with the device. Why? Goku asked as he tried to go to his son, just like the rest were doing. The Supreme Kai, however, had restricted them all. They weren't either in Super Saiyan form or strong enough so they couldn't break out of it. Please trust me, trust you, I don't care whoever the hell you are, that is my boyfriend, friend, brother, son, kin, student. One, they all yelled at him, including Vegeta. The Saiyans may have been heartless to other races, but they were extremely protective of their kin. They only cared more for their mates and family more. Not even fighting top that. Gohan tried to move, but was unable to as the teen felt his energy being sucked away. Struggling to stay up, he tried to raise his power, trying to break the control someone had over him. He screamed in agony as that energy was also taken from him. Yamu and Spopovich grinned at their success, that was easy. They commented, ignoring the looks of horror everyone had. They quickly flew off to their master Babidi the wizard. Shin finally stopped restricting the others and Ed in exhaustion at holding back that many people. All the others flew to Gohan, who was on the floor, very pale. When Kabito came forth, all the Saiyans and Piccolo stepped in front of him, ready to fight. Please, let me help, I can heal him as well as restore his energy. The man said to the others. They decided to give him a benefit of doubt, but were ready to destroy him if Gohan was hurt. The white-haired man kneeled next to the Demi Saiyan and placed his hand on Gohan's chest. His hands were covered by blue-green energy as they saw Gohan regaining his skin color and felt his energy restored. Kabito saw his master ing and blurred to him and also healed him. Thank you, my friend. Shin thanked. He then addressed the others, come with me, I will explain on the way. He told them, 
motioning for the Saiyans, besides Godin and Trunks, and Piccolo to come with. They all nodded, wanting to hear the explanation. Kibito will explain to you what happened. He spoke to the others. They just nodded, still too concerned about Gohan to care. Kibito tried to protest against his master, but became quiet, trusting his superior. Kakarot, once this is over, we will fight, and I will prove who the superior fighter is. Vegeta told the other full Saiyan, not allowing this to stop his fight with his rival. Goku ignored him, sending an absent nod. This angered Vegeta, but understood he was concerned about his eldest brat. Piccolo, Satsuki, Naruto, Gohan, Goku, and Vegeta all jumped into the air and flew after Shin, who was chasing Yamu and Spopovich. They were able to catch up in a minute as they flew over the ocean. The purple-skinned watcher looked behind me and smiled. So you've come after all. This will be most helpful. If I cannot borrow your powers, we will likely not win. He told them. Not win. You mean against those two. They were pathetic. Satsuki commented in curiosity. No, those two are being used by an extremely clever, Madoshi, or warlock in this language. He told them, his face turning serious. A Madoshi, questioned Piccolo. Yes, long ago, around when mankind on earth was just starting to walk with two legs. Deep in space, there was a Madoshi called Babidi. One day, this Babidi accidentally conjured up an extraordinary monster. This powerful Majin was named Boo. He said with a serious tone. Boo, he sounds like a fart. Goku completely ruined the serious and tense atmosphere with that simple sentence as the younger warriors chuckled at his joke. Shin sighed at the joke, but understood his intentions. They couldn't afford to underestimate Boo though, so he set the tense atmosphere up with the following conversation. Majin Boo had no reasoning or feelings, and did nothing but perform destruction and savagery over and over. He was a monster born only to raise terror in living things. In a few years, he had plunged hundreds of planets into darkness and destruction. Vegeta smirked. Something along those lines sounds like a Saiyan's. Shin quickly turned around and looked at Vegeta. No, Vegeta. The Saiyan prince's eyes widened seeing that the Kyoshin had read his mind. At the time, there were five Kyoshins. Each of us were such that we could destroy the likes of Freza with a single blow. Among us Kyoshin, four of us were killed. By Majin Buu. He told them, thinking back to how they were all killed by the bastard. Incredible. Goku said, that punk, he can read minds too, can he? He thought with gritted teeth. Majin Buu's ferocity was even more than his creator Babidi could handle. In any case, time came when he needed to rest, so he temporarily sealed Majin Buu inside a ball so he couldn't move. Babidi brought the sealed Majin Buu to this earth. The earth was supposed to be his next target. They all looked at him in surprise. Th that's unbelievable, Gohan voiced his disbelief. It was our chance, I was able to kill Babidi before he could break the seal. However, Majin Buu's seal was left alone, he continued, remembering how he left it on earth due to the fear that eclipsed him. But why, you could have destroyed it way back then? Satsuki questioned. Obviously this sanction was prevented, the ball that contained Majin Buu remains here on earth to this day, yes I could have destroyed him but I choose to leave him hidden, Shin said. Why would you do that? Why didn't you destroy him when you had to chance? Gohan asked. Because Majin Buu is no threat as long as he is confined to that ball, and until now we thought Babidi could release him, he said. Until now, Gohan said. It would seem that we discovered another, Babidi had a son, he's here on earth, Shin said. Here, Goku said, Babidi named his son Babidi, at any cost we must stop him, Shin said. But what will he do? Naruto asked, he intends to continue his father's work, he's going to release Majin Buu, Shin said. Not if we have something to say about it, Satsuki growled out as they continued to fly over an ocean. She wasn't going to let anyone destroy the place where her mate, family, and friends lived. It was why she and Naruto protected Earth. The others might have had the intentions of being good people, but they only cared about their friends, family, and each other. So it's obvious you were able to defeat this wizard Babidi before he could unleash Majin Buu on the Earth, but you didn't destroy Majin Buu, you choose instead to leave him here lying in dormant, Piccolo said. That's right we thought it best that way. 
We believed that Babidi was the only one who could free Majin Buu. We were mistaken in that belief since Babidi had a son, also a wizard, and if he isn't stopped Majin Buu will live again, Shin said. So I'm guessing Babidi's son is controlling those guys from the tournament. Goku asked. Yes his name is Babidi and in this case in this universe the son is as evil as the father, Shin said. Great, why doesn't that surprise me? Gohan asked sarcastically. It's simple all we have to do is stop Babidi from freeing Majin Buu, right? Goku asked. Yes that's right, but I'm afraid it won't be as easy as you make it sound. Babidi abilities as a wizard aren't to be underestimated, it may take all of us to defeat him, Shin said. Wow sounds like this guy is very strong, Goku said. Babidi's strength lies in his magic, physically he's not very powerful nor was his father, but a wizard doesn't need to be. Instead his magic enables him to harness the evil the lies in the hearts that lie in people like Spokovich and Yamu and thereby control their action, imagine what would happen if someone truly powerful came under his spell, Shin said. So if Spokovich and Yamu didn't enter the tournament to win then why were they even there? I mean what did they do to me? Gohan asked. Babidi intends to resurrect Majin Buu but before he could do that he requires a tremendous amount of pure energy, Shin said. So that why Shin stopped us, because we have pure energy and we would have just given them more of it, Naruto said. Babidi sent them to the tournament because he believed that would be the easiest place to gather the largest amount of energy, only after they saw you transform into a Super Saiyan did you become their target. If the others would have interfered, he would have as well. Kabito and I knew that Babidi would send someone to the tournament we also entered, the ball containing Majin Buu has vanished. We journeyed to where it lay before, but found no signs of it so we believed that it's in Babidi grasp and he waits for the energy to open it and upon his success the world will slip into darkness the light that has never been viewed by human eyes, the Supreme Kai told them. Goku then asked a question of his own, I don't think I understand you had your chance to finish off Majin Buu when you were fighting Babidi father, why didn't you take it? Goku asked, it wasn't worth the risk we feared that any damage to the ball might set him free. The ball in which Majin Buu was confined in was hidden deep within the earth where no human could ever find it. Though we allowed him to lie dormant if our actions had caused him to be released we would have been powerless to stop him, the Kyoshin said. They saw Spopovich and Yamu starting to land. Look they're landing, Shin said. But there's nothing out here, Gohan pointed out. This is odd, we have searched this entire area before, Kabito, who had caught up with them said as they all quickly landed and hid on a rock mountain as they looked down to see a small building down below the valley. Quick everyone, suppress your energy, we don't want them to know we're here, not just yet, Shin told the warriors. I can sense several life forces down below perhaps six maybe seven, but something blocking my line to determine their power level, said Shin. You can sense that, Gohan asked. Yes a little trick I learned from other species, but Babidi magic must be protecting the people he's controlling. I can't tell what they are or how strong they are or how they can fit into that small hut, Shin said. The warrior watched as Spopovich and Yamu talking to a strange alien in armor. Is that Babidi, the one on the left? Goku asked. No it's not, it's one of his minions, Shin said. Hey that ground looks like it's been disturbed recently like it's been dug up or something, Naruto told them. It's so obvious now, that's why we couldn't find his spaceship when we flew over, he buried the whole thing underground. Kabito spoke in frustration. And that means there's a chance Babidi learned that Kabito and I had followed him to Earth, otherwise there would be no reason to hide his ship, Shin said. So the wizard's smarter than we thought, he may be more of challenge than we thought, Vegeta said. I say we attack them now, the longer we wait here the more time we give them to resurrect Majin Buu, Piccolo voiced his opinion. No, we will bide our time, they will release Majin Buu outside the ship they won't want it completely destroyed, we will wait for the right opportunity when it presents itself, Shin ordered. Gohan then growled as Naruto and Satsuki looked down to a small house to see a dead family and learned the source of Gohan anger. Calm down Gohan. I'm not happy about what they did either but we can't give ourselves away, Satsuki whispered to her future brother. Hey someone coming out, Piccolo told them as they all watched the entrance as Spopovich and Yamu bowed and a red man with yellow eyes and pointed ears and horns stepped out with a little yellow man floating in the air with an orange cloak around him. Dabura, Kabito said in anger, 
What is he doing here? Shin asked. That accursed wizard managed to ensnare the king of the demons. Kabito said. Which one? Which one is Dabura? Goku asked. The tall one. Shin told them. I see. Is he strong? Goku asked. Of course he's strong. He is the king of the demon world. Shin told them as though it should be obvious. Wait a second. What is this demon world? Gohan asked. I would like to know that answer as well, Piccolo said. It is a shadow world that exists on the other side of this one like two sides of the same coin. One of you may be the strongest in this world but in his dark demon world Dabura is the strongest by far, Shin told them. The little guy so that's Babidi? Gohan asked. Yes it is and he is the most dangerous of them all, Shin warned them. I thought he would be much bigger, Goku said. Remember it is not his size that you should concern yourself with it's his magic. If he is able to keep a being like Dabura under his control, just imagine the horror he could inflict on this world, Shin said. So if this Dabura is that strong, and Babidi has him, what going to keep us from falling under his spell? Piccolo asked. A wizard seeks out evil desires in a person heart. Once discovered, he manipulates them, enhances them and ultimately use them to control his minions. This is how Dabura was captured. Once Babidi infiltrates a person heart and his influence is complete, all he needs is to find a trace of evil to bring them under his power. Only those pure of heart and free from evil desires like us have a chance to fight him successfully, Kabito said. I've never anticipated that Dabura would be here too, I'm afraid that this changes everything, Shin said in fear. Surely the Supreme Kai isn't afraid as he, Vegeta sneered as Shin glared at him. Hum. Fine, you can cower up here behind the rocks. I'll take them on myself if you don't have the stomach for it. I may just let you do that Vegeta, Shin said. Shin these guys seem pretty tough, but I doubt that he can match up against Cell, can he? Goku questioned, looking at his firstborn son. Gohan tried to feel the demon's ki. It was very high, but not as high as super perfect Cell. However, he could just be hiding his powers. Shin is he hiding his power? Gohan questioned the purple being. The Supreme Kai looked surprised at the question, but tried to sense it. He could not feel anything due to Babidi's interference. Sorry, Gohan, but I can't feel it, only what he outputs. Babidi is interfering, Shin apologized to Gohan. Don't know dad, he could be hiding it, but right now, he isn't. Gohan told his father. Something happening. Piccolo said as they watched Spopovich scream as his body began to expand as he blew up. Yamu then went flying off as an alien pointed his hand at Yamu and hit him with a Kai blast killing Yamu. What kind of people kill their own partners? Gohan said in utter shock. People who are evil as them, Goku growled. This is bad, Shin said. They killed their own men, Gohan said, still in shock at the ruthlessness of the bastards. That's the cruel game Babidi plays. He seeks out the most powerful fighters, uses his magic to bring them under his complete control and when he has no more use for them, he disposes of them like they were diseased animals. If he frees Majin Buu he will destroy all life on earth just like he did with Spopovich and Yamu, that is Babidi evil wish, Kabito said. Something not right, Piccolo said as he saw something suspicious. Yeah look, why is Dabura standing outside by himself? Goku said as Dabura clenched his fist as the ground below began to move. He know that we're here. Vegeta yelled as flew fast at them and appeared in front of Kabito with his hand held out in front of his face as he hit him with a blast completely destroying him as he laughed. Rasengan Barrage Naruto yelled firing multiple spiraling key blast at Dabura who dodged it as Goku came at him with Vegeta as they began to try to his Dabura but he would just dodge their block as he pushed them back and looked over at Piccolo as he spat in his direction. Look out, Shin yelled as Piccolo got spat in the face. I should have warned them. Warned us about what? Naruto asked as his lover flew at Dabura and almost got spat on too as Piccolo began screaming as his hands began to turn to stone. Piccolo Gohan yelled as his teacher and mentor turned to a stone statue. Guys hold on, Goku said jumping to Piccolo. What's happening to them? They turned to stone, Shin said. Yeah we figured that out, but how? Satsuki asked. It's one of Dabura powers, anything he spits on turns to stone, Shin said. We can do nothing for them now. No, Gohan said approaching Piccolo. 
No don't touch him, Shin yelled. Why not? Gohan asked. If we touch him of them now, they might break and there's no possible way to put him back together. Only killing Dabura will free him, Shin said. Dabura floated above them laughing. I'll leave you a chance to run, take it or you would rather end up like your friends, Dabura said flying back towards the ship. The others raced after him, intent on killing the bastard for turning his friend, comrades for doing that to Piccolo and for trying to turn Satsuki in stone or for killing his comrade. The Saiyans besides King Vegeta, too, for the first one, Saiyans the others for Satsuki, Shin for last. After landing in front of the small door leading to the ship as Goku and Gohan looked into the dark tunnel with Satsuki and Naruto looking over their shoulders as Vegeta landed behind them. Okay, let's go, Goku said. Right behind you, Naruto growled as they jumped in one at a time and floated down towards a light at the bottom as Babidi watched them in a crystal ball. Here they come. I'd be shocked if any one of them had a brain, Babidi said as he laughed like a madman. Trapped so easily, Dabura chuckled as the five Saiyans landed in the middle of a room. This place doesn't look much like a spaceship, Gohan said looking around at the odd looking room. Hey there's nobody here, I thought they'd be waiting for a fight, Goku whined. I swear I don't know how we're related, dad isn't it obvious they're setting a trap. Be on your guard, Naruto said as he rolled his eyes. Hey that looks like a door over there, think we should try and bust it down. Gohan said as Vegeta walked over to the door to examine it. What the hell is with all these M's everywhere I look? Vegeta asked in a growl as they sensed Shin as he landed into the room. So you couldn't resist the draw of revenge? Goku asked. You have no idea what you've gotten yourself into, Shin said as they heard a noise and looked up to see their exit close up. Once inside this ship there's no way out. What? Gohan said, our only hope for escape now is to destroy Babidi, Shin said. Well that is what we came to do isn't it? Goku asked. Oh well, I'll solve all our problems and blow this place to oblivion, Vegeta said. No you won't, sudden shock might accidentally set Majin Buu free, Shin yelled. The degree that you are estimating him is astounding, don't you understand? Even at a fraction of his full power Majin Buu can annihilate this entire planet and all its inhabitants in an instant, he can't be stopped. Okay so blowing up the ship is a big no, so let's bust down that door and find that little freak, Satsuki said with a sigh, not believing that Shin forgot they could do the same. I thought there might actually be a fight in this place, Vegeta said as they heard a strange noise as Goku pressed his ear to the door. It's an elevator, someone's coming up. Goku said jumping away as the door began to open as the odd alien they saw before stood in it as he stepped out with his arms folded. Welcome fellow warriors, you arrived at stage 1, he said. About time someone showed, Gohan said. So what's stage 1? Goku asked. Master Babidi is at the bottom level of this ship we are currently at the top level also known as stage 1 and there's no way of getting down to him unless you beat the warrior at each stage. You need not to concern yourselves with getting to stage 2, because unfortunately for you the first warrior you must face is none other than me, and that means none of you will make it out alive, the alien known as Pui Pui said laughing as Satsuki and Naruto rolled their eyes. Alright guys so which one of us gets to fight first? Naruto asked. Wheel rock, paper, scissors for it, Goku said as the five Saiyans began playing as Shin and Pui Pui watched in shock. One, two there. The Saiyans said in unison as they all choose paper. One, two, three. They all picked rock. One, two, three. They said going on for about ten games till four of the Saiyans picked paper and Vegeta got scissors. Scissors win. Vegeta smirked smugly, smug at beating Kakarot at something. Damn it, Naruto said. Ah I wanted to fight this guy, Goku said. Well sorry you won't get your chance, Vegeta smirked. Oh well at least we get some entertainment out of this, Naruto said, sitting up against the wall. Wait, please, you don't really instead to fight him by yourself do you? Shin asked. Of course I do, what other way is there? Vegeta said folding his arms. It's best not to question Saiyan tradition Shin so just sit back, relax and watch Vegeta handle this, Gohan said as Pui Pui chuckled. He, Naruto, Satsuki. Trunks, and Godin all had to learn about their heritage and Vegeta made them to it. They learned as much as they could, 
language, customs, and how Saiyans weren't killers, just that Frieza made them. They just loved to fight, only loving food and family more. On custom was to never get in a Saiyan's fight, unless they let you or they are about to die. Master Babidi told me to be careful because your high energy makes you strong and dangerous but you're nothing but a bunch of morons, Pui Pui insulted, not looking at himself. The only moron in this place is Babidi. He didn't investigate this planet very thoroughly, did he? If he had, he'd know that the most powerful fighter alive is standing in front of you, Vegeta said confidently. You're the most powerful fighter alive, Pui Pui said as he started to laugh as he teleported away from the door into the other side of the room. That kind of arrogance can get you killed, he said vanishing again. You're the most powerful fighter alive, Pui Pui mocked as he started to laugh as he teleported away from the door into the other side of the room. That kind of arrogance can get you killed, he said vanishing again. Don't underestimate him, Babidi uses his magic to attract the strongest warriors in the universe, Shin said. Calm down, dad can easily destroy this weakling, Satsuki said with an annoyed tone. This weakling couldn't even hold a candle to her father. What the Kyoshin was implying challenged her pride. Are you sure? Shin asked as Pui Pui reappeared. Yeah, Vegeta could easily destroy the guy, Gohan replied. He too was getting annoyed by the rambling of the Kai. You know none of you will ever leave, he said vanishing again and appearing a few steps away. And every ounce of energy you lose while I pound you will be absorbed in this room and as the energy is absorbed it will be channeled directly to Majin Buu. The weakling said with a smirk. Well, I guess that's unfortunate then since a weakling couldn't even touch me, Vegeta said as Pui Pui appeared in front of Vegeta. Keep dreaming. Before I'm done, I'll do much more than hurt you, Pui Pui said vanishing. Oh, will you sing us to death dumbass? Naruto said sarcastically. When you fight Pui Pui death is a certainty. He giggled. This bastard is getting really annoying, Vegeta spoke, teleporting in front of Pui Pui. Welcome to the end of your life and I promise it's going to hurt. Ready for the pain, Vegeta said as they stood there for a few seconds as Naruto made a gesture of looking at a watch. You two going to stare at each other all day or are you going to fight? The black-haired teen asked as Pui Pui jumped into the air and did a stupid spin kick that Vegeta easily caught. Pui Pui was shocked that Vegeta was able to block it as he jumped back and tried to punch Vegeta but was blocked once again. Well you fight pretty good, but not that good, he mocked, trying to show false bravado as he came at Vegeta with a barge of punches and kicks that Vegeta dodged easily. Vegeta lost patience and caught Pui Pui's kick and knocked him to the floor, trying to destroy the bones. See, Vegeta can handle this guy no problem, Goku spoke. If I were to take a guess, I would say that this fight will be over in about a minute, Naruto commented as Pui Pui tried to attack again but got kicked in the chin, sent him to the roof. He jumped from the roof and landed on the ground, only to see that Vegeta had vanished into thin air. Ha ha ha, the weakling fled like a coward. Pui Pui howled, not seeing Vegeta appear behind him. A coward, Vegeta questioned though it was said with an annoyed tone. Pui Pui turned around to see Vegeta standing behind him and got a punch to the face as he fell to the ground. You dare call the king of Saiyans a coward? Vegeta yelled as he smashed hit boot against the weakling's chest. One. He's good, Shin commented. This, fight, sucks, Gohan said, though the way he said fight, it was obvious that he didn't think this was really a fight. Well that's what happens when you spend all your time training, Goku said. What's wrong? Had enough? Vegeta mocked as Pui Pui got off the ground. No, Pui Pui said, trying to punch Vegeta, but was dodged easily as Vegeta appeared behind the Majin, throwing a weak key blast at him, sending him to the ground as Vegeta began to approach him. Suddenly, their entire surrounding changed to a red planet with a black void around it. What the hell just happened? Naruto asked as he got up from the ground. Where are we? Gohan asked. It's the Babidi. He used his magic to change the room it seems he's trying to give that fighter the advantage, Shin gritted his teeth, thinking Vegeta had lost now. Ah should be interesting, Goku said. Goku, it isn't Vegeta he's giving the advantage, Shin said. Yeah I know, Goku said. Welcome to my home planet. I've won many great battles here and by now. You've noticed my planet is different from yours, Pui Pui said as he picked a rock off the ground. 
It's the gravity, ten times stronger than Earth, he said, dropping the rock, creating a hole in the ground. Your hopes of winning are falling faster than that stone, you won't leave here alive, he laughed as Vegeta smirked a dark smile. The moron in for it now, Naruto snorted. The Saiyan smirked at the comment, knowing it to be true. Vegeta trained at 2000x gravity every day. 10x gravity meant nothing to any Saiyan. Maybe if this was 20 hundred times gravity, you might have an advantage but 10, I don't even feel it. Vegeta kept the smirk on. 2. You're just bluffing, I know you are. Pui Pui exclaimed, showing fear at the statement. He could barely move in 15, but this arrogant bastard didn't even feel it. Bullshit. Maybe I am. Hard to tell, Vegeta returned. Enough. Pui Pui yelled, running at Vegeta to punch him, but Vegeta dodged as he went into a series of his own punches. Vegeta punched his gut and kicked him back into a boulder. Vegeta being the ass that he is, begun jumping easily as Pui Pui's eyes widened. So you still think I'm bluffing? Vegeta asked as Pui Pui growled and Vegeta laughed as Pui Pui came running at him again as Vegeta flew towards him and grabbed the weakling's arm and pulling it, his feet on the armored alien's back. Stop, begged the Majin as Vegeta started pulling at the hands. He continued pulling, not caring about the enemy, despite Shin looking on in horror. Goku, Gohan, Naruto, and Satsuki just looked on, all of them not caring about an enemy. Goku learned his lesson of letting an enemy go after Frieza and Cell. Besides, Naruto saw Satsuki doing the same to Daku at the Chunin exams. 3. Ha! Huh, I'm amazed that Babidi would send such a weakling, Vegeta stated as a circle in the center of the room opened up. Hey look the floor opening up, Goku stated, walking to the hatch with the other Saiyans and Shin. Obviously you moron, Vegeta said, mocking his rival. It looks like an elevator shaft. Gohan observed. Let's go, I want to get back to the tournament, Goku said as they jumped into the hole and down to the second floor. Children so easily amused, Vegeta said jumping in after him with the other three following him. Goku stuck his head back out and turned to Shin. Hey, Supreme Kai what are you waiting for, come on let's go, Goku said. Now I see, they are very strong, Shin said still in shock as he walked over to jump into the hole while Babidi glared at them through the crystal ball. The second floor was much like the first except the floor was pink. Babidi really needs to reconsider his ship layout, Satsuki expressed her disgust, even going so far as to create a throwing up motion. That's weird, this room looks like that last one we were in, Goku observed. The other Saiyan just sighed, palming his face at the stupidity of Kakarot. Yeah and Babidi probably going to change this room with his magic, Gohan said. It's my turn to fight next. I wonder who's behind that door. I sure hope he's going to be tough enough for me, Goku said, stretching his body. Hold on, who said you can fight next? How do you know that me, Naruto or Gohan wouldn't like to fight next? Satsuki asked. Let him fight. There are more floors below us and we can wait, Naruto said as they looked at the door. The lower ones will probably be stronger. He telepathically told her. Yeah, but I want to finish this. I would much rather fight the others than these weaklings, she thought back to her mate. Let's just let father fight. Her lover thought back to his reincarnated wife. Fine, she thought back, her mental voice laced with annoyance. Naruto didn't want to upset the girl of his dreams, so he offered something else. How about later? We can have some fun, alone, he asked. 4. Hey, come on get out here. Goku yelled, finally losing his patience. Why don't we just smash through the floor and get to the bottom of this place? Vegeta asked. No, even though he is not at full power, the unnecessary shock could free Majin Buu and that would be disastrous, Shin exclaimed. I'm beginning to think that this Majin Buu may not be worth fighting after all and the same goes for that Dabura, Vegeta gruffly said. What, no, you can't be serious. Then you won't fight them, Shin questioned. Well, why should I? From what I've seen from Dabura so far, I don't see any reason to be afraid of him, I watched his movement outside and the only thing I have to worry about is his spit as long as I avoid that I can beat him, your friend Kabito and the Namekian were careless, that's all. Vegeta said. So do you agree with him? He asked turning to the Saiyans. Yeah, 
Vegeta is right. Dabur is not that tough. If it was seven years ago, we might be afraid of him. Seven years ago we fought this guy named Cell. Now that was tough, Goku stated. Oh please, that android Brawly gave us much more trouble when Gohan, Naruto, Goten, Trunks, and I fought him, Satsuki stated, remembering that Gohan said Brawly was stronger than Cell. Yeah, Dabura is definitely stronger than Cell, but probably not Brawly, Gohan commented. Hey, get out here now, let's go I'm ready to fight. Goku yelled at the door as it began to open. Well it's about damn time, Vegeta barked as the shadow of a very large creature stood behind the doors as a large green monster stepped out. What the hell is that thing? Goku asked. Wow he sure is an ugly one, Gohan said as the creature laughed. You all look yummy, who should I eat first? He said looking to each warrior. Why did I have to get this guy? Sure he's big but he kind of looks dumb to me, Goku said. Huh, the creature said. That's hilarious coming from you Kakarot, Vegeta smugly said. Huh, Goku questioned, turning to Vegeta. Exactly. I know that monster. His name is Yakin, Shin said. You've met him before, Gohan said. That's right he's one of the most feared creatures in the universe, he's extremely strong, I don't think Goku can beat him on his own, Shin said. Don't underestimate dad, Naruto said as the creature drool got onto the ground. Goku went into a battle stance and Yakin swung his massive arm at Goku who vanished as Yakin followed as floated above the others as Yakin swung his arms, legs, and tail at Goku who dodged as Yakin nails extended fast at Goku as Goku landed and his orange GI ripped. That was close, Goku laughed. Naruto and Satsuki sighed, he should stop playing around, both thought simultaneously. You were very lucky but you won't get away this time, Yakin said. I better watch it. One slip and those claws will tear me into two, Goku joked. Do you hear me Yakin? Listen to me, you're doing well my marvelous monster I'm proud of you did you know that? With your help Majin Buu will be resurrected sooner than expected I have a treat for you. When you finish off these intruders quickly how about we visit your favorite planet, the planet of darkness, would you like that my pet? Babidi said loud enough for everyone in the room to hear as the room began to transform into one of darkness as the room went completely dark. What happened? Who turned out the lights? It's dark I can't see a thing, Goku said as they heard Yakin laughing. Welcome to the planet of darkness, you're scratching your head aren't you? You can't see me but I can see you, Yukon said as Goku stopped scratching his head. You can, Goku said. Sounds like he's right at home, Gohan observed. Yakin was born in this place it's in the far end of the universe where no light can reach it. The planet of darkness, Shin said. You're mine now I'm going to eat you, Yakin said jumping down towards Goku but Goku jumped up and jumped hard onto Yakin sending him into the ground as he burrowed out and jumped out on the other side of the room. Where is he? Yakin asked as Goku was on Yakin back. Eat this. Goku yelled slamming both his fists onto Yakin head sending him to the ground as Yakin began running up the walls and tried to get Goku with his claws but Goku dodged it and kicked Yakin in the face. Hey, can any of you tell what's going on out there? Shin asked. Yes, Kakarot's winning, Vegeta snorted as Goku sent Yakin flying into a boulder as Yakin groaned and climbed out of the hole he was in. You can see in the dark, Yakin asked. No but I don't really need to I can sense your movements by the sound of vibrations in the air, your smell, and energy, Goku said. Huh, the moron asked, I do have one way I can see you, like this. Goku said powering into a super saiyan. Yakin, come on out stinky. I've seemed to have found my spare flashlight, Goku mocked as Yakin laughed. Well done, so you've fixed it so I can no longer hide in the dark, Yakin said. Why is he so calm? Goku questioned, time to feed, Yakin said opening his mouth as he began to suck the energy Goku was using to light the room. That's it, they can suck in light energy and use it as food, Shin remembered as Goku turned into his normal form while Yakin swallowed the light he stole. Great now it's pitch dark again, Satsuki muttered. Yummy, I've never eaten such a brilliant and rich light before, Yakin said. What's that? Goku asked. Yakin is a type of monster that eats light energy, Goku is a super saiyan. The energy he is admitting is like a delicacy to him, Shin said. Very tasty the best light I have ever had I want some more of that, give me some more of that now. 
Yakin said rubbing his belly. So he eats light, Goku observed as Yakin jumped down from the rocks he stood on. Okay, are you ready for the second course? Goku asked having an idea. Yes, Yakin said practically drooling all over the place. Are you sure? Goku asked. What on earth is Kakarot trying to do now? Vegeta asked. Dad seriously, don't go Super Saiyan, he's draining your energy. Gohan told his father, not understanding what the Saiyan was thinking in that head of his. Don't worry Gohan, I got this. This should kill him. Goku muttered powering up into Super Saiyan again as Yakin laughed. I am going to make a meal out of you, now come to me. Yakin yelled. Has he gone crazy? Why does he insist on fighting alone he knows he can't beat him, does he think this is some kind of game? Shin asked. Let him do what he wants, Kakarot wouldn't purposely get eaten alive, he has a plan, Vegeta said as Yakin began to suck in the light again. Yakin's stomach began to expand as Goku powered to level 2 giving Yakin way too much causing the beast exploded. Look, he blew up, Shin said, nah, really, I thought Goku died, Satsuki sarcastically said, Naruto chuckled at her while Shin turned a bit red from his enthusiasm and her sarcastic comment. Alright, he won, Gohan said, and with energy to spare, not bad, Vegeta said as the floor opened up next to Goku. Hey, the floor opened up, come on guys let's go, Goku said. Hopefully the next guy will be worth our time, Naruto said, waiting for their next opponent. Way to go, dad, I guess that monster bit off more than he can chew huh? Gohan joked. Sure did, Goku said. Now it's my turn, hopefully, the next warrior won't be a waste of time, Gohan said, excited at the prospect of fighting a strong enemy. Satsuki grunted, wanting to fight but she wasn't going to disobey or argue with her teacher and brother-in-law over something so minor. Honestly, all she wanted to do right now was either fight or hang out with Naruto, alone, without any interruptions. These, fights, if she could even call it that, had been far too boring. The only one that would even be a challenge was Dabura. Why spend her own time with these weaklings rather than her lover mate? With Babidi, Babidi was very angry right now since those bastards had already killed two of his best warriors. How was he supposed to gather energy for Majin Buu with all these weaklings getting defeated by those guys? He needed to send someone who was stronger, much stronger than both Yakin and Pui Pui combined, but he couldn't send out Dabura yet. He had other minions that he could use, but his opposers had proven themselves to be stronger, so how damn it. Maybe if this was twenty hundred times gravity, you might have an advantage, but 10. I don't even feel it. Babidi's eyes widened at that sentence. A devious smile soon settled on his face as he now knew what he could do to give his own warriors an advantage. He looked towards another one of his minions in the next room. Ula, how would you like to fight someone and get their energy? Babidi asked. The yellow wizard knew that the temptation would be too strong for the fool. Of course, the energy wouldn't go to him only Boo, but he didn't need to know that now did he. Sure master, the fool was easily tricked and went towards the third floor. While he was doing this, the son of Babidi chanted out a spell as his eyes glowed an eerie yellow color. Isdo it ip i e i, ah nuis and chi z z i ip. 5. While they did not know it, the Saiyans had been weakened while Ula, his minion was at an advantage. Babidi laughed as he used his crystal ball to watch Majin Buu be recreated. The Saiyans and Kai, what the hell is taking so long? Gohan growled, they had been waiting here for a few minutes and no one had shown themselves yet. Finally, the door at the center started to open. It's about damn time, Vegeta gruffly said, a scowl had endorsed his face. Out of the center came a man. He had a human-like appearance with long black hair, pointy ears, and a curvy, M symbol on his forehead. Half F his body was covered in orange clothes while the other half had a fishnet. He had blue trousers that were slightly puffy. 6. Gohan grinned, excited at the prospect of fighting a new enemy. He rushed to the man but was slower than before. About two times slower, the creature looked at the attacker and dodged to his left. He moved right out of sight. Ula looked at his hands, his eyes widened at how fast he had just moved. He then smirked, thinking that Babidi had done it. Ula, having gained a confidence boost, 
teleported behind Gohan and kicked at him. Unfortunately, he was blocked by Gohan's raised arm. Gohan grabbed the outstretched limb and threw him upwards, ready to fire a key blast at him, but as soon as it was created, it disappeared. What the hell? Gohan asked himself, shocked at the dissipation of his KI blast. Shin sharply gasped as he realized who the purple-skinned creature in front of him was. Gohan, that is Ula, the previous ruler of the demon world before he got overthrown by Dabura. He has an ability that dissipates anything that is not a physical attack, Shin called out. 7 and 8. Demon King Ha, Gohan thought to himself, he, skied, as he unsheathed the sword given to him by his mentor. He charged at the previous demon king with a cry while the aforementioned demon disappeared from sight and stood on top of Gohan. 9. Gohan disappeared from his place and threw a slice at his opponent and barely grazed his stomach. You were the previous demon king. No wonder Dabura overthrew you with how weak and slow you are. Gohan taunted. Yes, Gohan taunts. Ula released a cry of frustration and anger as he flew towards Gohan his vision going red with anger and rage clouding his head. Gohan looked on in amusement as the guy lost his cool, just like planned. Just as the guy reached him, Gohan swung his sword, nearly cutting the purple-skinned guy in half, but the guy dodged. He flew up to the top of the room before focusing energy into his hand. He threw his hands up then brought it down, a purple key beam coming at him. Gohan dodged it and the floor absorbed the attack, going to boo. Ula disappeared from view as Gohan looked around, trying to sense the Majin slave. He, however, could only sense the key of his family and friend as well as Shin. What Gohan didn't know was that Ula had more than just the ability to destroy key around him. He also had the ability to destroy his own key signature completely by using demonic magic arts. 10. Ula appeared above the surprised Gohan and drove the Demi Saiyan to the ground, causing him to release some of his energy, letting Boo absorb it. Master Babidi, please take me to a place where these fools' energy will be drained when released, Ula requested telepathically. Babidi, Babidi thought of the request before nodding. It made sense after all. Pedios Yuzanu o u is o n land uisid on kusik bs idpi edo e uzi nuso, Babidi chanted. With the Saiyans, Kai, and Demon, while the slave and master were communicating, Gohan had gotten up and started to growl. He started to fly at Ula, but the room metamorphed until they were standing in a completely different place. Gohan jumped back and looked around cautiously, making sure there was no trap. It seemed normal, well as normal as it can get being in a place he had never seen before. Welcome to my home world. The realm of demons and spirits. Ula started to cackle like a maniac as Naruto's eyes turned wide and his face paled. Satsuki saw this and sighed, knowing her lover's fear of ghost. 11. Vegeta, however, didn't know Naruto as well and quickly questioned him. Hey, Kakabrad 2, why do you look so scared? He may have been nicer to the brat since his princess was apparently made and had made Kakarot and his brats more Saiyan-like, but that didn't mean he was above teasing his rival's brat. 12. Yes, he knew his daughter and the brat were mated. They had been obvious as well as their smell all over each other along with the mate marks on his daughter's neck had clued him in about a year ago. Around the same time he had first ascended to the second level of the legendary transformation. 13. Better be sure. Gohan took precautionary measures and turned into a Super Saiyan. He didn't want to get beat up by Ula, who was sure to have the advantage, and release his energy so Boo could get reawakened faster. The demon was blinded by the light but he quickly grew a gleeful expression as the KI was sucked out of the earthling. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.